see if I can see this live going on. Um, I am going to pull open the chat here real quick. Y'all let me know if you can see me. Let me know in the chat if you can hear me. It looks like it's working here. Uh, we'll go ahead and let you know. This is put together with like popsicle sticks and bubble gum. So Lord knows if this is going to work at all. I'm probably going to have to increase the size of that font right there. Y'all are a little bit, a little bit small. Again, we're we're trying to make it work here so I can see what's going on. All right, looks like we've got Killer Cheyenne in the chat made it for this one. I appreciate it, Mike Hammond. How are you doing? Um, Machiavelli in there, Kyle Jett. I appreciate you welcoming me back here. I'm in Las Vegas, for those that don't know. If you're wondering why we've got this thing going on. And, and again, the lights are probably going to shut off on me randomly. I brought some battery-powered lights, threw some back there, got one here. If they shut off, we'll, we'll just adjust. We'll make it work. As long as this one doesn't go off, if it does, I can clip the overheads. I just, I'll just i be orange like an Oompa Loompa from those lights. So, um, ooh, Casey, if this is your first one, I apologize for not putting on a better production quality. So, um, everything, Arthur's making the first one as well. Well, again, I... Now, now I'm wondering if I should have streamed if this is the first one y'all are catching. This is not a typical stream. We're just going to hang out. It's just hanging out. I have bought a lot of whiskey while I'm here in Las Vegas, and so I'm going to go through and show y'all those. This being one of them, um, you know, y'all notice I've got some Willet Purple Tops the other day, but I come across uh, a couple of Willet Seven Year Purple Tops here while I was in Vegas, so I picked those up. Mike is not seeing anything. Can y'all see something? I mean, it, it was coming through for me, so obviously the audio video is working. Y'all just confirm for me that it's working for y'all. And then we're going to sip on this Willet Purple Top right here. This one is called Recession Proof is the, the pick here, and this one is 122.4 proof, seven years old. All right, what's going on? Hunt with me in Albuquerque. Well, hit me up in, I, I'm not exactly sure what I'm coming through or anything, but we'll figure that out. Let me know. Seth, what's going on? I, I'm having a pretty good time uh, in Vegas, but it's it's been a little, a little boring when I didn't have something to do. I had conference last week, conference next week, but I did have a couple of days I got to hang out with a, with a friend here in Vegas. So it's been fun the last couple of days. Appreciate it, Michael. We have hit 200,000 subs, thanks to y'all. Um, a lot faster than I anticipated. It took us like five months to get to 100,000 and then seven more weeks to get to 200,000. Um, views have been kind of slow lately, but, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. We tend to, you know, go viral in waves like, something like this, and we're just kind of in one of those lulls right now. All good. So, Stephen and that's a grace as I can hear. Smokey can see. Steven says can see and hear. Audio quality isn't fantastic. Is it not? Is it not picking up this microphone? Is this better? Is it not? Is it not working on this microphone? Should I adjust it? Is it? Does it need to be louder? Y'all, let me know. Loud and clear. You have one of these Willets. Do you have one of the recession proofs, um, or is it a different? You know, most of them are picks of some sorts. This one is 126, bottle 126 of 196. Sounds good to y'all. A bit distorted. Well, I apologize for that. It's a different, like it's running through different stuff than what I normally do. So, I, I again, I apologize for the production quality, but we're just here to have a good time. So, hopefully it's not too off-putting. Now, this glass is the liquor lineup glass. This is a Visky glass. Um, and yes, I, I'm saying Visky with a V. Uh, it's it's kind of like a Glen Cairn, but it's got a little bit more solid base, and it's kind of like angular shaped instead of bulbous. Uh, really nice. That's a glass. A lot more like robust and and hefty than a Glen Cairn. But I didn't have a Glen with me, so liquor lineup was nice enough to give me one. So I have something to sip on, or at least something to sip in on this live stream. It's a pretty nice place. So this is the house I rented. I was going to be here for three weeks. It was cheaper to rent this house for an entire month than a hotel on the strip for just one of the two conferences I was going to be at. So it does take, you know, 30 minutes to Uber in. 
Um, but that's a that's a small sacrifice I'm willing to make to save a bunch of money. I, I was just in Vegas not too long ago, Joe, and I'm back. And I'll be back again in a month or so. Like, unfortunately, or fortunately, if you like Vegas, in the industry I'm in, which is e-commerce, uh, there's just a lot. Every conference is in Vegas, like every freaking one. So you got to... Um, Got to come here a lot, and it seems more and more each year. So, yeah, tonight I'm, I'm having that wheel at purple top, and then we're going to start looking at bottles here in just a second that I obtained on my trip here. It does hold the whiskey. Yeah, the whiskey holds the whiskey. Uh, having a good week, Big Daddy. Uh, live review of this. Woo, I don't know. This guy, now y'all can't, y'all... You, I, I'm looking forward. It's probably going to take a month for it to be edited because it is a lot of footage. It might take longer than that. But I filmed a video. I had a friend um, that has a, a house on the outskirts of town here, and he came, came in, and we went out there, and he brought the entire 2022 Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, and we tried each and every one of them. And then we opened this one right after. And so this is a good bottle of whiskey. But it's a little disappointing after you've just had the BTAC collection, as would any bottle be, honestly. Uh, Streamlabs, drop it in the, the automated messages. That seemed to be, seems to be working. Yeah, Keith, I was at SHOT Show. Um, I was at SHOT Show last week, and I'm at Acumatica Summit next week. Um, Two Tall's got a new Rift single barrel. Awesome. Comes in garbled, might be internet connection. I, again, this is put together with duct tape. And bailing wire it would be my internet connection here. If it, like, we'll just try to do the best we can. Uh, it looked like it had enough upload speed to make this work. So I'm hoping that it, it does work. Um, last conference was in Phoenix. You can see E.H. Taylor in the box. Well, then we won't talk about this one. I, we'll get to Let's Let's talk about some bottles. Let's talk about some bottles. So... Grew up in Opelika. Melissa, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Love Opelika. Um, Evan loves the channel. Awesome. Yeah, Paul, I, I have been lucky with the BTAC. Like, whiskey is about friends. It's about sharing it with friends. And honestly, if you, wanna, if you want access to good bottles, it helps to have good whiskey friends. Like, that's most of the good stuff I get is through connections, friends, relationships, or waiting in line for a long time. So it definitely helps to have good friends. Wild Turkey, rare breed, Daniel. Awesome. New Orleans. Gene, I'll probably be in New Orleans in a couple of weeks. Seems decent enough, Ron says. All right. Um, and some of y'all may be a little bit behind there. Minnesota in the house. EHT single barrel. Drink a little of that. Or not. So here's the, here's the first bottle. These, these are the bottles... I got just going out and hunting. A lot of these came from liquor lineup um, here in Las Vegas, but the first one was Smoke Wagon Uncut Unfiltered. Um, I didn't have one of these. These are kind of hard to get back in Alabama in the Southeast, or at least in Alabama. It might not be in, in other states, but kind of hard to get. So I picked this one up. Um, and it's, it's a bottle from November 5th, 2022, batch number 160A. And I got two of those, a buddy of mine, uh, back in Opelika really wanted one. He's like, can you, you think you can find one? I was like, I'm pretty certain I can. So grab that. Appreciate it, Benjamin Brown. Thanks for joining. Northern Indiana in the house. <laughs> Doing cool stuff's from Ohio. Yeah, well, I hear Weller stuff's really easy to find up there. Uh, I've had Old Forster 1910, yes. I haven't had it in a while, but that's the the double barrel, the, the double oaked. Um, good stuff. Good, nice duct tape and bailing wire. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate I'm doing the best I can to get this set up going. I was going to stream on Monday, but I just didn't have time to even get it set up. Yeah, snaps. Um, it, it is crazy how, how big the channel's gotten, how quickly, especially like we have a whole nother channel, a couple of other channels that do more e-commerce stuff and they get no views whatsoever. So it's, it's fun to see this one take off where that one struggles a lot. Sydney T. Bow, what's going on? How are y'all doing? How are things down in the Foley Gulf Shores area? Cheers from Durham, North Carolina. Jack Daniels country. Well, we, we had the Jack Daniels review come out today. 
just opened a bottle of Smoke Wagon Uncut, Unfiltered. Let me know, Gene, your, uh, your, your notes on it. What do you think about it? Was it worth the buy? I don't have my receipts on me. They're all packed up. So I don't know exactly what I paid for them, but right around, it wasn't, wasn't expensive. Uncut the Younger? Ah, see, I, they had it. They had it, Benjamin Brown, and I just didn't know anything about it. So you're saying if I go back before I leave, I'm sure it's still sitting there that I'll be able to pick that one up. Irish creamer and bourbon tastes like ice cream. I, I don't have any here, but I'll keep that in mind. The strangest or oddest whiskey you've ever tasted. Well, I mean, it depends on how you define whiskey. But I actually have the strangest whiskey, and we'll talk about this in a minute. But this is Curveball Barbecue Flavored Whiskey. You heard me right. Barbecue whiskey right here. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about all the stuff over in these boxes here in just a second. The next bottle I bought here is a little store pick from Liquor Lineup, uh, Jack Daniels Single Barrel Rye. I've never had a Jack Daniels Single Barrel Rye, so I thought that one would be a nice addition to the bar. Love the history vids. Awesome. Angels Envy in Iowa. All right. We're going we're gonna to talk about Angels Envy here in a second because I might have a bottle of it. Thrasher from LaGrange, Georgia, just right up the road from me most of the time. Or Ontario, Canada. Man, we got folks all over the place. Just moved to Baltimore. Excited to go to Sac Sacramore. Their rye is fantastic for sure. Shredward, what's going on? Sm picked up that smoke wagon uncut. Had 100 on the shelf. Bought. What do you think about it? You like it? Great pour. Also, barbecue liquor. Eh, it's not my jam, man. It is. Ooh, it tastes like barbecue sauce. Like I've got a full unopened one, but I tried one. Um, we'll talk about where I got this here in just a second. But um, it is. It's. It's the, it's the worst thing I've ever had. It's it's whiskey I've ever had. It is like, it's it's a whole bundle of why. Most of the time, if I have something that's not good, I'm like, okay, this at least makes sense. You could mix something with it. You could do some, like, I, don't, I have no idea. Like, you might could use that as a marinade, maybe, but I just use barbecue sauce. Like, I don't, I don't understand. Matt from Athens, what's going on? Picked up a bottle of Angel's Envy. Nice. Favorite sip is Michter Small Batch. That's a great one. That's a great one. Um, you know, it's all caramel forward. It's good. Y'all have to come up to the house sometime and and try a few different ones. Uh, thoughts on Sazerac lawsuit with the distributor. Um, there is, um, was it Whiskey Real Talk? I think it's the channel. Uh, forgive me if I get that wrong. Um, but Whiskey Real Talk did a breakdown on the split. I don't know if he's talking about the lawsuit, but the split and and how they're changing distributors. The lawsuit, for the most part, is political posturing. Like, it's just, you know, it's it's an ugly divorce, and they're, you know, they're just kind of forcing lawyers to work it out. Angel's Envy Pick from Albuquerque Whiskey Society. Awesome. To make a glaze. Yeah, Ron, but if you cook all the alcohol out, it's just going to taste like barbecue sauce. Why not just use barbecue sauce? All right. we go. Okay, Smokey. Smokey, you're getting ahead of me here, Smokey. You're getting ahead of me, okay? We'll get to it in a second. Gonna we'll get to it in a second. You're way ahead of me. Nassus, Virginia. Hopefully, I got that right. Mixer Sour Mash is good. I prefer the bourbon and the American whiskey over the Sour Mash, but the Sour Mash is still good. Put some chicken nuggets in it. And my next bottle, seeing how you're way ahead of me, is a Frey Ranch Rye. Um, so I like the Frey Ranch so much when I came out here before. Um, on my BOGO deal, buy one, get one deal. This one was not BOGO, but straight rye whiskey there from Frey Ranch. So um, looking forward to giving that guy a try there as well. And I apologize for the chat. moving kind of fast. If I, uh, if I miss your comment and you really want me to answer it, don't, don't hesitate to post it again. I mean, don't just like spam it, but I, tr I try to get to everyone I can, but I can only see like 20 of them at a time. Joined the Discord last night. Nice, Tyler. Thanks for joining. It's a it's a lot of fun in there. Like, y'all are doing a great job. I can only spend so much time in the Discord. I mean, I'm traveling, I'm working, trying to create videos. I spend every minute I can in there, but, man, there's a great, great crowd in there. It's a lot of fun. I think a barbecue whiskey is the right sauce in a crock pot. With time. Yeah, but, like, why not just barbecue sauce? Like, not barbecue whiskey? Because the alcohol is just going to cook out, and it just tastes like barbecue sauce. So, like, what would you do that? You want to keep the alcohol in it, but you want it to taste like barbecue sauce. 
I, I just I haven't found it. Like maybe there's a use. I just don't know. I just don't know. Got to get a Frey Ranch. Yeah, if y'all haven't had Frey Ranch, give it a try. Like no joke. I haven't, haven't had the rye yet. It's just good old Frey Ranch, small batch, whatever it is, like your normal release. It's freaking fantastic. We're going through it, Brandon. We're at two two smoke wagon uncut unfilters, Frey Ranch rye. We're at a a uh, Jack Daniel single barrel rye. What's my next bottle here? I got I got too many bottles in here. Uh, and then my next one, obviously, I picked up this um, Willet Purple Top. Um, this one's actually I got another Willet Purple Top, but that's supposed to be over here. It's not supposed to be in this bag. These are the ones I picked up out hunting. We'll talk about those in a second. The other one is Jack Daniel's Single Barrel Barrel Proof. In Alabama, these are kind of pricey. When I see them, they're sometimes up to like 100 bucks. Alabama, Georgia. Um, every once in a while, you'll find them at a decent price. But I see them marked up a lot. Out here, they're like 60, 70 bucks. So I went ahead and grabbed one of those for the bar as well. McKenna 10 is great in baked beans. <laughs> Uh, Bruiser Wheel, nice setup. You like this setup? I just threw some lights up. It is like I, there's a, a almost a hundred percent chance something's going to go wrong with this setup before we get done with this live stream. I just guarantee. You. I like I, I couldn't test the audio. Like I didn't test anything. We just flipped a bunch of switches and we're going uh, going live. So I bet. Ooh, a mustard liquor, a liqueur, maybe. Yeah, we're gonna get. Yes. Um, of course, people keep seeing this E. H. Taylor sticking out here. We did find this. So liquor lineup has these just like, they'll just take one and just hide it in the store. And then when somebody buys it, they'll just put another one out when they, they literally had another one today. When I went in there, I went back in there today. We did a barrel pick with them. Like it's not my barrel pick. My, we'll talk about my barrel pick here in a minute, but they were just happy. Like my buddy knows them and he invited me over and we went over there. I thought we might get a, some decent bottles of whiskey. Maybe he had some inside connections. Didn't get any whiskey. I didn't buy anything, but they did uh, an old elk. I think it was an old elk rye store pick, and I got to be on the tasting panel for that. So that was fun. But yeah, they had one of these. Sitting there. I walked that whole store, and I had like six or seven bottles up by the counter. And I'm just looking around, and some dude walked in, and he talked to the dude at the front. And the dude's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, go grab that alive. Go grab that E. H. Taylor small batch back there." And I'm like, "You just went, and it was back there on the back of the bar." And uh, I was like, man, I, I've looked this store over four freaking times. And because it, it was like up above the bar, I, I didn't even see it. Um, and I was like, dang, I really missed out on that. So when I went to check out, I was like, man, um, you know, did, is there like a program y'all do? Like, how do you do your allocated stuff? And he's like, nah, I just, I was like, you know, because that dude just got an E.H. Taylor. I just missed it. He's like, yeah, we just put one out. And when somebody buys it, if we have another one, put it out. He's like, I got another one. You want it? Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, do I want it? Yes. You don't need to ask me twice. I will take it. So, got me one. Um, let's see. What else did I buy? What else did I buy? Oh, yeah. I'm most excited about this one. This is the one I... I have Willet Purple Tops, people. I have Willet Purple Tops. I have E.H. Taylor. I have some good bottles of whiskey. And this is the one I am most excited about out of the ones I purchased um, from, from just like hunting. Um, so this is Frey Ranch Barrel Strength. This is um, a single barrel barrel strength Frey Ranch store pick from Liquor Lineup. They got their sticker on the back there, and I am so freaking excited. I may just have a party and have a bunch of folks over and drink this one right here. What's the go-to area in Georgia? I, I mean, I tip, typically the best bottles I've got come from the bottle shop uh, or Mr. B's in Columbus. Done decent at some of those. Oh yeah, that Jack Daniel single barrel barrel strength is great. It's like sixty bucks. Yeah, I had well the back just looks so bad. So I'm at like the kitchen dining room table. The the kitchen's over here, and there's like a little living room in there. And I just had to make it look kind of nice there. Will can we have a drink and meet and greet while in Vegas? Are you in Vegas right now? Um, because I'm I'm in Vegas right. I mean. I'm, I'm over by Vegas High School right at the moment, right at this moment. I might have a little time. I mean, honestly, tomorrow will probably be the only time. Um, I'm headed out for a little bit this weekend to do some stuff, and then I'll be back next week. Might be able to find some time, but honestly, tomorrow's the best time. What, 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 what are, you let me know. If you're in Vegas, let me know. What are we doing? I'll meet up. I'll have some drinks. I ain't doing nothing tomorrow. 
Can't find any of these bottles except that's why I hunt when I'm on the road because I can't find a lot of these either. You find another E.H. Taylor. Well, like I said, they had some sitting there. And I might, I might like, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. Just ping me out of the live stream. We'll talk about it. What's the tax out there? How much was the Taylor? Now, this Taylor cost me, um, I want to say it was $49.99. I think it was. I think it was $49.99. Pretty sure. Now, I don't know what the tax is, but I don't, you get it for $49.99. I don't really care what they tax. Uh, I am live in Vegas, Joe. We are live right here in beautiful Las Vegas in my Airbnb, and my computer just went to sleep. That's not good. Hopefully, the live stream off when it went to sleep. Let me check on it, make sure we're still live. Um, I told y'all this was going to be a bit of a mess. It looks like we're still live. So <laughs> that's, ugh, how do I stop that? It's plugged in. I may just have to reach up there and move that every once in a while. Oh, hit me up. Uh, are you in the Discord? Jump in the Discord. They're dropping the links in here. Uh, get in the Discord. Hit me up if you, you know, happy to get together. Uh, I don't really chug, Brandon, but, you know, or really do shots. I'm enjoying my whiskey. I'm a sipper. Oh, that's a great plot. Great price for this Taylor, for sure. Marcel Clarice. What am I? Is this Silence of the Lambs? Uh, Judge Roy Bean. I have not. I have not. Um, I don't know much about that. I've heard of them. Haven't done much about it. Huge fan of E.H. Taylor Small Batch. I finally got an E.H. Taylor Single Barrel. Uh, yeah, I do think most of... <laughs> Not always, not always. I think they're very similar, but they're a little different and the single barrel's harder to get. So that puts it a step above. But if you fresh pork pop both of those, they're both exceptional. So I'm not sure, like it just depends on which barrel you got as to whether or not a single barrel is better right there. But on average, they're gonna be pretty similar in quality um, with a fresh pork pop. Yeah, it's over 100 where I'm at, too. That's why I, I went in and grabbed it. Mr. Smelly, jumping in here. Appreciate it. I, I like the Aramis. My wife does not. So that's Mr. Smelly's the one uh, that recommended that I try the Aramis to smell like 1972. Um, I enjoy it, but my wife is like, you smell too much like my dad, which I, I think makes it perfect. I think that makes it wonderful. Uh, we have old price tags on our EHT... Fifty three ninety nine. I I've not had Cantaritos. Um, what is that? Slowly getting into whiskey. Thank you, thank you. There, appreciate it, Isaac. Let's see. Okay, I got one more that I bought. Now, don't judge me. Okay, do not judge me. Don't do it. You're gonna want to. You're gonna want to judge me on this one. Okay, all of these. Whiskey snob whiskey. These are like, I'm really into whiskey. I bought these. These are good whiskeys. This is a respectable collection. And then I bought Virginia Black. I know, I know, I know you're disappointed. I'm sorry that, that I've let you down. Um, but I need it for a video. Like, I need this. And for those that don't know, Drake, the, the Canadian musician Drake, uh, made this whiskey, uh, put this guy out, and it cost me, sticker's still on top, it cost me $46. Um, it's in, honestly, like Mr. Smelly, if you're still here, this is like a cologne bottle. I thought this was some sort of cologne bottle. If I, if I can, when I'm done with this, I'm going to make my own, my own fragrance I can't even talk. I, like, literally, I haven't even had a whole drink today. Vegas is so freaking dry. My mouth just gets dry. I'm going to have to go grab some water. It just everything just dries up. I'm going to make um, a fragrance. I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to put, like, a big spray topper, and I'm just going to, like, you know, go around. Just I may put Aramis in here and just go around spraying people with it. I don't know. Um, but I don't expect a lot out of that, but I needed it for a video, so... We do a lot of the celebrity whiskey reviews, and I don't want to set it next to the edge because it, it was hard to find. Like, it took me a while to actually locate that guy. <sighs> have you tried Wilderness Trail Yellow Label? I think that's what I have at the house. Was it like a six-year-old Wilderness Trail? I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, 
but I, I do have some wilderness wilderness. Tr- I need something to drink. Oh, War Eagle one. I did buy a scotch. I'm not even. I wasn't even going to show it because I bought it for Nate. Um, but I did find a scotch for Nate. Y'all see it in the Discord if you were over there. I'm not even including it. Making it a fragrance, like it's a. It, it's. It looks like that. Looks like some sort of cologne bottle. Uh, so Matt, we are pro- we're definitely going to do some sort of meetup. We're definitely going to do some sort of meetup this year. I, my schedule is just such a flux right now that I'm trying to figure out when I'm going to be there. It takes, like, it takes a lot of planning unless y'all going to be really, really like lenient with me. Cause like, if we just say, you know, let's show up and bum rush someplace. Like the problem is right now, as fast as we're growing, if I said, let's do a meetup, I don't know if I'm going to have two people there or 200. Like, I just don't know. Um, so we gotta, we gotta do some planning. We're probably going to sell some tickets. Like I'm not trying to make any money on it, but like, we got to have some sort of commitment. So we know who's going to show, um, to figure that out. Um, we may, we may sell tickets and just donate them, or we may sell tickets and just buy the best whiskey we can. And everybody that comes drinks it, something like that. Right. Let's sell, you know, 200 tickets at, at 20 bucks a pop and I'll spend four grand on bottles of whiskey and we'll drink them. I, I don't know. Like, I'm not trying to be for profit on that. I want to hang out, but we got to figure out how the logistics works so we know, you know, whether I need a small venue or we're going to have a concert and a cow pasture. Like, I just don't know. Um, what number is the fray? You're talking about this. This is the rye. I'm assuming you're talking about this fray ranch here. Um, I mean, it's 100. 26 proof or 36 proof? That's 136 proof. Liquor lineup. I don't know what you mean by number, though. I don't know what you mean by number. Or 2,000. I, I don't. I don't know if I have that kind of draw there, Stephen. But I hope so. I like the optimism. So, what's the best way to wait? Best. I'm going to be struggling all day. My mouth is like, y'all don't know how, if you've ever been to Vegas, I'm good in like, you come in for a week. After a week, like all my sinuses are dry. Like everything is just rough. Uh, I don't know how to make sangria. Don't know. I probably made it before, but it's been a minute. 2.30 a.m. Yeah, Mr. Smelly is way, way overseas. Man just stays up all night. Mr. Smelly's got a cool stream. He does fragrances, so they... They talk about different aromas and scents and things, which is funny. It's very similar to bourbon. So check out his stream if you haven't already. Barrel number. Okay, so it's got a barrel number on it. Let's see here. Barrel strength, single barrel. And that's all written in. I don't see anything about, and I'm wondering if their sticker's covering it up. But I don't see anything about a, Barrel number, is it on the liquor lineup? Private barrel select liquor lineup. But I do not see anything about a barrel number on this. Um, so they but they have this big tater stick on the back that might be covering something there. So I'm not sure. We'll see. Unfortunately, I, I apologize if you, you know, I can send pictures. If you're in the Discord, you tag me. I'll gladly send you pictures of it. Have another drink. It, the alcohol doesn't. The alcohol does not stop the dryness of Vegas. What's the most expensive whiskey out? That you're talking about, like just in general, that a person might buy. I mean, I don't know. Like bourbon stuff, usually the limited Buffalo Trace, your OFCs, your Double Eagles, um, those are super expensive. Usually, though, MSRP on those is going to be like two grand, three grand. But then secondary markets, they just shoot up. It's on the side. This one doesn't, I'm telling you, it doesn't, I'm blind and it's dark in here. There's like, a, I think this is covering it up. There's like a whole writing here, There's something there. And I think maybe it's been covered up. Um, I don't know if I can peel the, t- I don't want to peel the tater sticker off. So no barrel numbers. Went on with Mr. Smelly. I had a good time with that stream. That was fun. Get my sangria from Costco. Awesome. Old Forster 1920 is a good one. Uh, all right, so that's what I got while I was out hunting. Um, pretty good day, like a pretty good couple of days there. So I'm happy with that. But that is not all of the whiskey I got. So this is what you can do if you're just persistent 
you put in the effort, you go hunting, you know, you, you go from store to store to store, or you find one good store. Most of this came from liquor lineup, which has a good selection, but that pales in comparison to having good friends and making connections and building relationships. And I don't know why whiskey that fit in this box before now does not. Okay. So I have a buddy that, that lives out this way or has a house out this way. I think his grandparents are here and he has their house. And so he, he's been holding some bottles for me. He gets access to a lot of stuff I can't. And so he's been holding some for me for a few months. So I went to his house. We had a good time. You'll see in the video, we tried all the Buffalo Trace antique collection from this year. Um, and so he hooked me up with uh, this Willet Purple Top. And then he took me to the liquor store he got it from. And we built a relationship with um, that guy at Express Liquors in Parump, um, Las Vegas, who, who has a great selection himself. Um, he, you know, gave me a good deal on the second Willet. I also got a backup E.H. Taylor small batch because you never have too much E.H. Taylor small batch. Like that just doesn't happen. Um, and then anytime I find a Blanton's, I just buy it. Like I just, anytime I see one, if it's a reasonable price, I'm just like, it's MSRP, I'll take it. So that's, that's just kind of the primer. Like that's where we started. But then this was the only Weller I didn't have on my bar. He didn't really want to sell that one to me, but... He, he, he helped me out. He helped me out because that's, I, we drank all the Weller 12, so I needed another one. So got that one. And then another Elijah Craig 18, which is, you know, not my favorite pour, but I do like to have them around. They're good. They're good. They're a little oaky, proof's too low, but still really, really good. Um, no, I didn't get the BTAC. He, he has the BTAC. We drank a lot of the BTAC. I was not lucky enough to to obtain one of those B tags. We didn't. We didn't. We're not going that. If the, that's your level of expectations. You're going to be very disappointed by this drop. But the next one, Hancock Reserve. I've had one Hancock Reserve in my entire life. It was pretty good um, for an 88.9 proofer. You know, another one made by Buffalo Trace. I didn't have one because mine had gotten drank a few months ago, and so got another one of those. Then we got. The 2021 Four Roses Limited Edition. The 2020 Four Roses Limited Edition is one of my favorite bottles that I've got from Four Roses. And I'd never tried this 2021. So he had uh, secured me one of those guys. And then the best packaging I've ever seen in a whiskey. This is an Angel's Envy Cask Strength. And it's got this box, and the box is magnetic. Like, there's no latching on it. It just snaps into place. And then it's got a little thing here so you can, like, hang it up like a plaque if you want to put it on the wall. It's so freaking cool. And then there's a note here and a really cool bottle. So excited to give that guy a try. Um so that's, that's the haul. That's what I've got. Um, the 12 was a nice find. I, I was excited about that one as well. Traffic, traffic pick it up soon. Um, like, dude, uh, Express Liquors and Perrault's got an awesome selection. Like, he had, I'm still trying to talk him out. He had a lot B sitting there, but he, he was a little iffy as to whether or not he wanted to sell it to me. Because I was going to, I was going to expect a, a good price. No big deal. Standard issue. Just a Weller 12. Just a thing. We don't try to gloat here. I gloat a, play. I gloat a little on the inside, but I'm never going to do it openly. You know, I'm, I'm excited about the Weller 12. Although, I will admit, out of all of the Wellers, it's like right toward the bottom for me um, of, of all of them. And that, with this one, I will have all of them on the bar at the house. Open to be drank, fair, you know, open to drink. I haven't opened a single barrel yet, but I will when I get home. And we'll do a video trying them all. I'll blind them all when I get home. And I don't expect this one to do well. I just, just proof too low. Like it's just, it's just low proof. Um, so if the proof were higher, I think it would be great. 
When am I going to come out with my own whiskey? Well, we've got the Brusel Barrel Pick, so I do have an update on that. Let me put these bottles up. We'll talk about the Brusel Barrel Pick. But as far as, like, my own whiskey label, that is something I would love to do. Um, and at some point, we're going to do it. But what I've got to do is sell a bunch of barrel picks first. Like, I've got a – we're going to build a barrel pick program. I've got a retailer. So step one was go pick the whiskey. We took some patrons, and we went, and we picked the whiskey – and then we had to wait for them, took a couple of months for them to, to get it all barreled up and prepared for us. It is in a warehouse right now up in the northeastern part of the U.S. waiting for us to start selling it. I found a retailer I'm going to work with. I am building a website so I can control like the front end. If you have any problems, reviews, you're communicating with me. Um, and we can just put products on there and drop a, a bunch of barrels so we're going to build a, a there'll be brusel.com, but then there'll be kind of a separate subdomain for just picks. So when you buy a pick, you can't buy a pick and a T-shirt. And that's because when you buy whiskey, it all has to run through his payment processor and, you know, connect to his fulfillment and everything. So the store will actually ship it out and it's all legal. Like we're, we're doing everything completely above board with that. Um, but he's he's able to ship to most of the U.S. There'll be a few states. I'll I'll have more details soon. Um, there'll be a few states he can't ship to, and I'm, I've still got to ask about international, but I've got a lot of work to do. And that is my objective tomorrow is to work on that, to hopefully get that pretty close to done. It may not be perfect, but I'm hoping it's perfect enough to get us through this first one. And as soon as we sell this first barrel of whiskey, I'm going to start doing as many store picks as we can do. Like we, I'd love to do one or two a month, uh, take patrons. We'll go visit or realistically, we'll probably have them start sending us samples, and we'll get the little, like we did, like we did with the pick at Liquor Lineup today. They just sent us three or four samples, and then I'll divvy those samples up into smaller bottles and ship them to patrons and you know, rotate and just try to get all of the patrons and supporters involved in, in the different barrel picks. We pick one, and then we order it and, and run it through that. Um, once we've got that going, we may think about doing our actual own, like, contract distilling. So I've already talked to John Emerald Distillers about possibly doing some contract distilling, but honestly, I just don't have the money. I've got to buy the entire barrel and sit on it for four years. Now, I could source whiskey, just buy somebody else's whiskey, put it in my own label. I don't really want to do that. I just, I just don't want to do that. I might I might do some fun experiments with that at some point, but um, I, if I'm going to put my name on it, I want to make it, right? I want to work with him. You know, he may actually distill it, but I, you know, I'm going to have my hands in every aspect. And honestly, I want y'all to have your hands in every aspect. You know, we'll bring supporters in, we'll vote, we'll, you know, we'll have polls, we'll figure out the mash bill, we'll figure out all the things we want to do, what type of wood, the char on the barrel, we'll do everything. And then it's set up for four years and figure it out. And and I don't want, like right now we could do that. I could, I could crowdsource it. I could ask people for money, buy a barrel, you know, but I still don't have a place to put it. Like, do we age it in his warehouse? Like, there's just a lot of questions. And I've just been busy, but as time goes on, we're slowly starting to answer all those questions, so we can do all sorts of fun stuff. Um, I appreciate it, Smelly. I appreciate it. The cra that is crazy nice packaging. So it's still angel. Yeah, Jay, I'm not a huge fan, but I've never had the cash strength, so it could be pretty solid. Do, uh, I mean, three hens. If you got some inside into a Weller Antique 107 barrel pick, you let me know. Like I will do that all day long, but that's, there's a long line to get that barrel pick. And I'm not, I don't have that kind of pull in the industry to, to cut the line. Now I'd like to get on the line. So I need to do that. And they just kind of changed how they did it, but, or how they're doing it moving forward. And it's based on points. So it may take you years of being on that list to actually get one. Uh, Todd, I'm hoping, I, like I said, be in the Discord. Um, we're going to put it out to um, patrons and channel members first. So we got a special chat for that. So if you're on here, you're a channel member, and you're not um, in that special chat in Discord, be sure to let us know. Um, I will post it here on YouTube as a post, but like it's not easy to communicate. Like I can pick, make a post to only channel members, and we'll do that. Um, but you may not see it. Like it, it's just not a real great form of communicating with people. We will post it on Patreon as well, and then we'll post it in the supporters chat in Discord. And those folks will have access to it first. We have 180 bottles. Um, so it's 180 bottles, and the MSRP on them is 110 bucks. But 
with the retailer, I'm worried like the retailer's taking like a huge cut of it. Like it's it's gonna be 110, 120 ish dollars. That that's MSRP on the barrel strength barrel blend that we that we've chosen. They don't want me to sell it less than MSRP. And honestly, I like we're not gonna make anything off of this one as it is. So it's just about getting it done. Um, so yeah, there's a link from Streamlabs, just like Streamlabs is on point, aren't they? Um, I guess that's Will throwing the command for it. 15,000 for a full barrel of new make at a minimum. I wouldn't think like, so it shouldn't be. Um, if it's, if we are buying it already aged, you're probably talking about, you know, around $15,000 for a brand new, for an aged barrel of whiskey. Um, if I'm aging it, like, I, you know, it was kind of expensive. I, I forget the exact numbers, but like, he's like, we're buying it. He's going to age it. You're basically like buying an aged barrel. I would love to rent or purchase a, a commercial facility, which I'm hoping to do over the next year or so. And we can buy, we can have him make it and then we can age it in our own Rick house. And that should lower the cost significantly. Um, and if it doesn't, then I'm be building a still and I'll just hire a st you know somebody to come in and make it every once in a while for us. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I don't want to necessarily go that route. I don't want to be a, a full-time distiller or anything, but we might get there. We might get there. In the Discord, I asked the other day, so hopefully you can. Let's see. What was was that in re reference to? Is Todd behind? Oh, shit. That's the shipping to the UK. Um, I was like, which question? I, I hope so. Yeah, we, we talked about that. I remember talking about it in the Discord. So um, I will... Um, I'll post as soon as I know. So I'll try to ask tomorrow and see if I can get answers on that and then post it. So as soon as I know, I'll let you let you know. Uh, ben, that's what we're talking about. I'm hoping this week. I don't know. See, I'm, I'm leaving Friday to go do some stuff. So I literally have tomorrow to get the website set up. I don't think it'll be ready. Um, and then I'm at a conference next week. So I just don't know. It might be end of next week before I'm done. But then... I'm at a conference next week, and then I'm like, I really need to work my butt off and try to get it done tomorrow, to be honest with you. Like, I, I'm going to have to be working nights or something on it um, at the conference if I don't get it done tomorrow. And then if it's done tomorrow, I'll probably wait till like Monday or something and try to try to drop it. You've ran a steel once. I've run one once or twice, but I'm not saying what came out of it was drinkable because it was not. That's a hey, that's exactly what mine was like, OG Brick. We made some really poor moonshine. You have a video of the steel? Awesome. I'm going to sell out guaranteed. I, I mean, I hope. It's only 180 bottles. So I, and I'm going to take at least 12 of those to the house. Um, so, you know, that, so that's going to leave like 158 bottles for the rest of y'all. That, that's not math. 168 bottles for the rest of y'all. Um, uh, so, again, Ben, the best place, we're going to do a video, but honestly, by the video, by the time the video releases – it's going to be gone. Like, it's just not going to be there. So Discord, it, you're either, you know, you're going to get first crack at it if you're a supporter. Channel member here on YouTube of any size or patron. I think our smallest is like five bucks. Um, and and then make sure you hit Will up here in the chat and we'll add you into a, a special group. But we're going to drop it on YouTube at, for members only. We're going to drop it in, in patron for, you know, for those folks. And we'll drop it in the supporter chat on discord and then you'll that's you know but honestly if you're a supporter unless unless we got somebody goes crazy on it you know we theoretically numbers are not that high so unless everybody buys a whole case of it you're not gonna you're, you're gonna we're gonna have some left for everybody else and that will just be dropped in the discord yeah math is hard man it's you know it's, i'm tired it's been a long week uh, Rada, so technically what we're going to do is pre-orders, but not really. So it's in the warehouse. Uh, my retailer says I can have it here in a couple of days and we can start getting them shipped out. Um, so he's thinking about like with bear easy. He's like, we're just going to get a, a couple of cases and then we'll ship them out. And then we'll get a couple more cases. If I drop it on Monday and they all sell out, then he'll just get them all and get them shipped. Um, so technically it's a pre-order, but they should start shipping out really, really quickly. I've <laughs> been following Hero for years. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. 
some killer rye shine. That sounds pretty good. I don't care if people start buying cases of it. I need it all sold. Like, I, I don't care. Like, do you really want to? It's going to be expensive to ship. I may discount it by the case. Um, you know, long term, if we're selling a bunch of them, like if everybody can buy them and people are actually buying them, I might in the future say just get one bottle or two bottles or something like that, right? Um, but realistically right now, I'm just – I've I've never sold any. I'm really bad. Y'all will find – I'm really bad at asking for money. Like, I don't want y'all's money. I want to hang out with y'all. I want to have a good time. I don't, you know, I'm not, not here trying to take money from people. If I could just do fun things with whiskey and give it all away, that's what I would do. And so I'm just really bad at asking for money, right? Like, honestly, the patron thing weirds me out a little bit. I love everybody's support, and, and it really helps us out. But I'm it's still just like, you know, these, you know, money money's hard to come by. Like, folks work hard for it, so. You know, I'm still nervous about just just selling them. That that's all. Would I like a sample of the killer rye shine? Um, honestly, Stephen, I would like a sample, and I would like to try that. But at this point, because we get so many views, and honestly, so much hate on a lot of those, I'm just afraid people are going to send me something I should not be consuming if it's like a sample bottle or something. So right now. We're not taking samples. Now, if we meet up somewhere in person, we hang out, bring some, I'd love to try it. But I'm just trying to avoid drinking somebody's urine, you know? Uh, my favorite bourbon, $50 or less that you can get just about anywhere, probably wild turkey uh, rare breed. Yeah, Robert, no problem, man. I, when you saw that, and you're like, oh, I'd rather have the dark heather shirt. I'm like, yeah. Luckily, we caught it just in time. Um, like those things are print on demand and like within a few minutes, sometimes of, of the order coming through, they're already, you know, being printed or already in the queue. Um, so I saw it, I went in there, canceled it right away. Um, so I, I prefer the dark Heather over the black as well. So it, yeah, it is, it is Ben. And a lot of folks do it, you know, and a lot of folks have patrons and supporters, but like, Honestly, if you just wanted to, if you're crazy enough to send something like that, you're crazy enough to pay $5 to be a patron for a month or two and then send it. So I'll drink it. So I, I try to, I try to stay like, I just trying to not be risky. That's all trying to not be risky. Love the hat. Awesome. You get these, these, this is the Bruzel trucker hat. There's the trucker hat and there's the, just like, um, snapback, you know, kind of all, what is it? I don't wool, whatever the freaking hat. Um, it's uh, it's really warm though. Like you need it in warm. It doesn't breathe too well. So I had to have the. As soon as my my supplier had these trucker hats, uh, I had to I had to get some of those because I I'm a big boy. I get to sweat. Like I get that momentum train going towards sweat town. There ain't no stopping it. So I like these trucker hats. You can get it at bruzel.com if you want one. What's going on, James? You all right? Uh the Willow Purple Top is is pretty good whiskey. Honestly, though, I don't, I'll have to try it. I've got one at home. Uh, this one's seven year. I want to say the one at home might have been six. Um, I, I look forward to trying this versus the one I have at the house because I think the one I have at the house is better. When's the Glen Cairn? So we, we dropped the Glen Cairns um, recently and they all sold out pretty quick, but we've picked three new designs. So we, we changing the design up. I designed the one that came out before, and it looks like a kindergartner designed it. It's pretty cool because it's like, we'll never make that one again because I'm not a fantastic graphic. I'm an okay graphic designer, not a wonderful one. So we had our designer that designs all of our shirts, designed six new ones. We picked three of those that we really liked with the supporters in the supporter channel, and those have been paid for and ordered, and we're getting one case of each. And then we'll we'll try to, every time we get down to like a quarter of a case left, We'll order a new case. So I'm going to try to keep those in stock for, for the long haul. So once these get here, they should almost always be in stock. Makers 46. I'm not a huge fan of the French Oak Stave, but it's not bad. I can see how you like it. Yeah, Chasing Need. I, that, we're in the Airbnb. So for those that have just joined us, we are here in Las Vegas hanging out um, in my Airbnb. So it's not quite as nice as normal backdrop. And it is, like I said, it's, it's, this whole live stream is just put together with Popsicle sticks and duct tape, so it's liable to fail at any particular moments. Whole Foods while hunting in bacon. I'll do that. I'll check that out. 
Yeah, I got Smoke Wagon Uncut Unfiltered over here. Somebody's told me Uncut Unfiltered, the younger I should get as well. I passed on that one. I said, I'm going to go back, see if they have it. Uh, the the Maker's Private Selects with French Oaks are pretty good. Like the higher proof Maker's with French Oaks. I, I would agree with that. Um, I like Widow Jane 10. It's got some George Dickel in it, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I think they do a real good job of kind of blending it in to where it looks like um, it, it looks like a feature, not a not a problem, right? Used Yellowstone barrels. Um, it could be because this one's a neck pour. It could be. Um, now we did open it like a day or two ago, but it it hasn't been um, long uh, open, so it it could be that. And I could just be misremembering the one I got at home. It's still a good bottle. Don't get me wrong; that's a good bottle of whiskey. But it's not as good as the ones I have at the house in in memory. This was just not as distinctive. Why did the blue light turn off in the back? Probably because the battery went dead. If it turned out, like I said, these are, which means my key light right here is probably going to go dead here in just a second as well. And then I'll have to turn on the overheads and I'll just be orange. Most underwhelming bourbons. Most of my underwhelming are just ones that are highly sought after. Everybody loves them. I get them, and they're just like, man, what, why are you chasing that? Like Elmer T. Lee. Fine bourbon, but it's not a $200 bottle. Um, you know, every once in a while, like, I get a lot. A lot of people hand me stuff that is, oh, try this. It's from a local thing. And it's like they obviously aged it in like a two-gallon barrel or they put a bunch of oak staves or oak chips in it. Um, it's usually stuff like that, like small distilleries that are just trying to get a product out really quick. And it's I understand the economics of it. You got to make money, right? If you're just sitting on bourbon for four years, we just talked about how I can. Um, I understand how that's that's difficult. But Lord have mercy. Some folks, some folks like that funkiness that uh, that rapidly aged, or they get caught up in the story and they think it's a decent whiskey. Like it just as much as the Bardstown Eight. All right. Jumping off for the night, Kyle says. Take it easy, man. Have a good time. What are we, we've been live for an hour almost. I do need a Cuban cigar. We're going to have to go outside. I can't smoke in the Airbnb, but I, I started to bring one today. Bardstown 8 did some fancy stave finish. I think I've had the 8. Um, I think I just had a sample of it at, a, at an event right before it came out. I remember it being pretty good, though. Uh, yeah, I do drink quite a bit of beer, but normally it's just cheap beer. Like, I've got some... Uh, if y'all want, I'll, I'll go grab my beer of choice. I've got one in the fridge here. Let me go grab it. I need I need some cool refreshment here anyway. So, But again, you're probably going to judge me. You pro if you're a beer snob, you're probably going to be some judgmentalness here. So let me go grab it. Also grab my free smart water here. Blue light did die, didn't it? It must have not been charged very well. Right here. Look at here. Smokey's got it. Smokey knows what's coming. Uh, sweet home, yes, I've had the blends gold and the straight from the barrel. What do you want to know about them? Yeah, the MSRPJ, Elmer's fine. But it's like all the hype, and then I finally get one, and I'm like, What? Widow Jane equals baby, but on the nose? I don't even know what that means. Early times in Wild Turkey 101. Early times, not bad. Nothing wrong with that, especially the bottle and bond. Dusty E.H. Taylor. Man, need some of those. Um, nah, nah. We got the... I bought like 20 Coors Banquets when I landed here, and this is what I've been drinking. Hey, nothing wrong with Blue Moon, but that... Like, I only drink that if it's on draft, so... Smokey is like Nostradamus. He just knows what's coming. Nothing wrong with the Rolling Rock. MSRP at Costco when they opened. Store only got one bottle. Of course, the pappy of the beer world. Man, it's nice and nutty. Like, that's just a good beer. I love the little squatty bottles. It's just, it's an experience. It's awesome. Cream soda and fireball. Like, are you trying to get me to try something disgusting or you think that's going to be good? Let me know. Smoke wagon whiskeys. Uh, smoke wagon. I, all the smoke wagons I've had are pretty good. 
I just got the uncut on unfiltered. I haven't tried that one yet. I think the one I've got at the house is a small batch. It's pretty good. Shock top with an orange. I have nothing wrong. on draft. I just don't love shock top and blue moon in the bottle. Um, if I've got a like a perfect temperature draft, I don't think there's anything better than a blue moon. I'll be honest, but. I did not buy smart water. I'm smart enough not to buy this. Somebody gave it to me. Alabama does sell Yingling. I'll, if I can't find like a decent beer in a store, like if, because lots of times I'll go in and it's all like just Bud Light and, you know, all light beers, but they'll have a Yingling. That's what I'll grab. Don't drink B Bloody Mary there. Um, nah, don't, don't do that. I don't. I, I like just tomato juice. Ah, nah. Cream soda and whiskey is good. I'll, I'll have to try that. So sick of everyone drinking Bush Light. I mean, I, I like a beer to have a little flavor. You know, I'm gonna drink it. I'm gonna drink. I'm gonna drink it. I got, I got Southern real quick, didn't it? Hey, I start drinking these freaking banquets right here, and my accent starts getting a little heavier. I start laying it on a little thick. You know, shiner all day. Uh. I think you might have got Yingling right, Chris. I think you might have got it right. Everyone drinks Milwaukee's best. Jay Kelly with the two ninety nine super chat. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. Uh, Brian, I don't think I've ever had a Kentucky Mule. Somebody was telling me about a Kentucky Mule and a couple other mixed drinks the other day. I'm like, that's worth trying. I'm not a huge fan of like ginger beers in general, but in a mix, might be pretty good. Metcalf's Vermont Maple Bourbon. Haven't had that. What's up, Ryan Montgomery? More Southern, the better. Black and blue, blue moon and Guinness. Ah, Alan, hit up Wheel. You see Bruiser Wheel right there. He controls the he controls the topics for the most part. I mean, I veto really, really dumb ideas, but I wouldn't mind trying that. Blood Oath depends on the pack, Brian. So a lot of the ones I have, like six, I think it's six and seven, are kind of high rye, finished rye. I'm not a huge fan of those, but they're pretty good. Um, I thought the latest one I have, which I think is the eight, is actually really good. I like it better. Cream soda video turns into YouTube short with you saying it's amazing. Maybe, maybe. Hey, if you give me an idea, don't don't be upset when I make content out of it. Paul's going to need another. Somebody get Paul a drink. What's going on, Matt Porter in the house, man? How are you doing? I'm just hanging out here in Vegas at my Airbnb. I was bored in an Airbnb and said, why don't I come hang out with my friends here? Check Budver? I don't even know what that is, Mr. Smelly. Am I a major cocktail guy? I mean, not really. I try. I mean, I, I'll drink an old fashioned. That's a cocktail. So, um, I not, but I don't drink a lot of them. No, I just normally like my alcohol pure. You know, give me a beer, give me some whiskey. I'm, I'm pretty easy to please. But then if you make me a cocktail, I'm happy. But I'm just not gonna make a fuss about it. Honey bourbon with Mountain Dew. But no, Lord, that does sound like that would actually be really good. All time favorite distillery as far as the products they put out. I mean, I just call me a tater and give me some Buffalo Trace. Um, Will it makes a great old fashioned, a purple top old fashioned that gets some hate on TikTok for sure. I might have to try that. A&M is up 15 on Auburn at the half. Lord mercy. I forgot the game was on tonight and it sounds like I'm glad I, I forgot. And the Auburn's at home. Jeez. Appreciate it. Son of a Bree. I have not had 10 cup 10 year. Mick ultra. Nice. Appreciate it, Chasing. Appreciate it. Take it easy, Derp. When you're filming on the go, use the Rode Bluetooth mic. Do you use your phone camera? Uh, yeah, I'll grab I'll grab what I use when I'm on the go. I'll grab it in just a second. Let me catch up with these. Uh, liquor lineup. In uh, there's a, there's several of them. Let me give you the one that I I went to today. Um, just a second. Robert Carson with the five dollar super chat. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate that. But there's a couple of liquor lineups. The one I went to to buy these bottles um, that I just went and bought is 
It's 5510 North Decatur Boulevard in North Las Vegas. It's a bit, I mean, I guessed it was a beer. I just don't know anything about the beer. Like, what type of beer? I understood it was a beer. Uh, Maybe cocktails I created myself. I honestly, dude, the, we did the shaker and spoon thing the other day. We did a, a an ad read for them and a, our first sponsored post. Their cocktails were freaking incredible. Like I wasn't lying. That crap was great. Much better than the stuff I get at a bar. For me, I usually just make an old fashioned. Like that's what I'm making. I, I make a good old fashioned, sweet old fashioned, but it's good. Bush is best. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, I love an old banquet right here. This is my this is my go to right here. Super cheap Costco rum. Don't like it? Well, at least it was cheap, Anthony. At least it was cheap. Um, what are we out in Las Vegas for? So last week I was at SHOT Show. This week I'm just staying here because it's cheaper to rent a house for a month than to rent a hotel near the ship for a few days. I was renting a house for a month because next week I'm at Actimatica Summit, which is a that's an ERP system for, you know, for business stuff. Uh, and we're we're signing up for a partnership with them. Local brew Wild Leap is. To, I, I've heard a lot of things about Wild. I think I may have tried a Wild Leap, but I couldn't couldn't tell you for sure. Mickey's never seen that. Old Rip Ten at dinner, nothing special. It's a really good whiskey. It's not a thousand dollar whiskey, but it's a good whiskey for sure. Everclear is pretty much liquid gas. It's like just pure alcohol. Like it's it's just like. It's not meant for consuming. Yeah, bourbon are too lazy, right? That may be what it is. I try to say, ah, oh, you know, I'm just simple. Just no, I'm just lazy. That's what it boils down to. Appreciate your gamer, I'm your favorite creator, man. That's a that's a high honor. Thank you. Um, this is where you come when you're looking for quality and not quantity booze talk. Wow, I don't know how to take that. I thought I was given quantity and quality. Thanks, Brian Stone, for the $1.99 Super Chat. Anytime. I haven't drank any cognac. What what cognac should I try, Ben? Shot show when I thought I couldn't get any cooler. You know, that makes me more cool to half the folks in here and less cool to the other. I don't know. It's bourbon. Probably more cool to 90% of them and less cool to 10%. Uh, they were all sorts of cool things there, Matthew, but I was I was spending a lot of time just kind of working and, and, and doing some stuff, but I'm glad they don't sell anything at the booths because I would not have had a bourbon budget left when I left. Start the mower with Everclear. We're going to do that at some point, Jake. At some point, we get so many requests. At some point, I'm going to do, probably when I get back, I'm going to do something to try to start the mower. So it may be Everclear. I've got some really high-proof moonshine we may try. We're going to try two or three different things with the lawnmower. So I'm probably going to do a long form video in several shorts to where we just try different proofs up and up and up until we get the lawnmower to start. I think that would be a fun video. Mickey's malt grenades. I don't know anything about those. Mississippi State is up seven on Alabama too. Oh, no, on the Barners. Uh, is that Barners or Bammers? I don't, I don't know. Um... My daughter, Ellie, says, hi. I won't stop saying, well, tell her I said hello, Ellie. Martel Blue Swift Cognac. All right, well, make a note of that Martel Blue Swift Cognac. Let's get some of that. Why is Johnny Walker Blue so expensive? Because people keep paying for it. That's supply and demand. People quit buying it, they would come down. What's going on, Gomez? Or Gomes? Uh, one of those two. Um, how far did you think you would get on social media? And I'm on, so we are on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We, we, we've, it's weird. We started on TikTok and that was going really well. We were growing Then we started posting on YouTube and that just took off. And we're probably in the next couple of months going to pass our YouTube subs will pass our TikTok followers. We started posting a couple of months ago on Facebook. That's going all right. Instagram will give us no views. They don't even, they don't, they don't care. Like no views on Instagram whatsoever for any of our content. Um, so it's, it has been crazy. I didn't, I didn't think we would grow this fast. I thought we'd be successful. 
but this is beyond the the level of success that I, I thought we'd be able to achieve, honestly. So I, I'm excited. And, you know, I don't get all the credit. Bruce will. Um, you know, I don't know if Shred's in here that does a lot of our editing and stuff on the back end. Um, you know, it's it's definitely not all just me, I assure you. My next bourbon will either be Wild Turkey Rare Breed or Angel's Envy. I like the Rare Breed a lot better. Now, it's high proof, so you might not like that. Angel's Envy is going to be a little easier to get into in its port wine finish. So if you're, you know, if you're asking that question, I'm assuming you haven't bought a lot of bourbons, um, Kalen. So if you haven't bought a lot of bourbons and you you're haven't really gone into super high proof stuff, you might prefer that Angel's Envy. Um, but it's, you know, it's just kind of hard to say, but overall, like once you've drank a ton of bourbon, if you're just like, you know, two years from now, when you've had, you know, 75 different bottles and, you know, you're drinking them on the regular and a Glencairn neat, I would bet you prefer that rare breed. Louis the eighth cognac. Um, how is Willet pot still reserve? It, it's not wonderful. It's a beautiful bottle. I would not say it's a $57 bottle though. No. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Benchmark 8, um, but I love all the other benchmarks. So if you can get a top shelf or, um, what is it, a top, top shelf, small batch, there's there's four or five benchmarks other than Benchmark 8. All of them are exceptional at the price. All of them are like 20-something bucks. I think it's top floor, not top shelf, top floor. Um, you know, small batch, I think there's single barrel. There's a, there's a bunch of them, and they're all real. Just grab all of them at 20 something bucks, spend a hundred dollars, get them all and, and enjoy the heck out of them. Uh, the lost Monarchs, the only Redwood I own and it. It's pretty good whiskey. Best Kansas. I don't know what's made in Kansas. John price in the house, man. I'll be home in a couple of weeks. Maybe if you like next week, I'm not home the week after I'm not home the week after that I'm home. And to tomorrow, they're supposed to be breaking ground on my garage. So I finally got the contracts and got those signed. So I'll be home in a few weeks to check on that, and we, we should get together, man. Yeah, we're doing all right, John. I appreciate it. What's your everyday carry? Are you, you, I mean, you're talking about like shot show type of stuff. Um, I, I don't – I don't. I mean, I'm just usually at home all the time, so I don't normally, normally carry. I, I have liquidated the few that I had. And I'm not going to, you know, we know what we're talking about. I'll just stay away from certain words. I'd, I'd like to keep this on the, keep YouTube promoting this. Um, so I, I, I was looking at some, like I was looking at some, but in Nevada, you can't, you can't buy one without a Nevada driver's license. So I, uh, I did not go shopping. I wanted to go, I got all hyped up from shot show. I wanted to go shopping and I just couldn't do it. So, but it's time it's coming. A new one's coming. I really like the staccatos. 2011s, those look so good. Uh, the quarterly drops in Bama. Uh, well, they they have a page for it now, and I think it is the quarterly lottery. So there's a page on the website for it. Now, I checked it earlier this week, and it was just a blank page, like a coming soon. I haven't checked it in a few days, though, so it might have something on it. So that page being there confirms it is a quarterly lottery, but until they fill that page out, it won't, like, I don't know what the specifics are. My liquor, I don't, I don't have a liquor, my, uh, my liquor storage. No, it's, it's in my basement. Oh, my key light just went off. Hold on. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like right in the middle of my freaking house. Let me turn mm -hmm. another overhead light on here. Um, so we can see what we're doing. Give me a little more light, but I figured the batteries on these wouldn't last long enough to, to do the whole freaking thing. What's the best candle scent I've tried? Oh, now you're asking me tough questions. I don't have answers to. Um, I, the Bland's candles out of the Buffalo Trace gift shop are actually really good, but I, I, I'm not an expert in candle scents. Uh, the H Derringer was mediocre at best. My wife kind of liked it, but it just tasted like grass. Like it just, it was just very, like very, very grain forward grass. Jay Riger's in Kansas. Also really big into bourbon before my daughter was born. Got a, yeah, yeah, I understand that. I understand that. So before I liked higher proof, then grab that, grab that wild turkey rare breed. Uh, top floor bonded single barrel. All, yes, all of them. Fantastic. No one says the word whiskey as well as I do. Uh, 
I, I feel like I'm saying it right. I don't know. I get a lot of, a lot of folks are like, what, what, how are you saying whiskey? I was like, I'm just saying it the way it's pronounced, I thought. I haven't had dead guy whiskey. Um, appreciate it, Lord Gamer. I couldn't grow the beard till I was like in my 30s. So I, I, you know, I was baby-faced for a long time. The 2011, ah, oh, nice. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get one. I may need to borrow yours. <laughs> uh, Chatter, the Chattanooga stuff is like has a lot of malt in it, and I just don't love the maltiness. So I have not loved the Chattanooga stuff as much as I had hoped. Um, got a favorite 1792, the 12 year. Yeah, still says coming soon. Okay, uh, on the Alabama ABC um, quarterly whiskey drop. Uh, ben, I don't smoke a lot of cigars unless I, I'm, if I'm around other people. I got folks uh, to hang out with. We'll go outside. We'll smoke some cigars. But usually, I'm not just smoking them by myself. What board? I don't play board games. Uh, I don't like honestly. I don't play much games at all. I just games are a lot like working. If I got to like have my brain on and I got to be like thinking because I I play to win. Like I don't. If I'm playing something, I'm playing to win. I'm putting some thought into it. And I get frustrated because everybody else talking, not paying attention. I'm like, it's your turn. It's your turn. Play the game. Because I'm like strategizing. I'm like, I need some pace. We're going to make this work. And I take all the fun out of it. I, I, it's not fun for anybody. It's definitely not fun for me because this is I, it's a competition and I came to win. So I just don't. Let's, let's just like work. I'll just, I'll just go do some work. On your wish list too. Nice. I didn't, no, I didn't have a bad opinion because I broke the cork. It was bad and I broke the cork. Uh, that was my part. I'll take I'll take credit for the. It was dumb. Like the cork was dry. It barely would go in the bottle. I'm sitting there just like trying to force it in. Like, of course, would it come out? No, it wouldn't come out. And then you're trying to wiggle it out. Like, it, that was my fault. I should have like just soaked it in some water or something uh, first. Probably would have probably would have worked. Until my 30s, we'll still, yeah, yeah. You still have hope. You still have hope. I, like, it just wouldn't fill in. If you were willing to pay $200 for a bottle, what would be the small list of bourbons you recommend? Well, I mean, if you're talking about, like, secondary value, um, honestly, what bottle would you buy secondary that's $200, bottle, $200 a bottle? Uh, Weller Antique 107, you can get for less than that. Those are 100 to 150 on the secondary. Um, these E.H. Taylors are less than $100 on the secondary market. Um, anything anything that's $200 that doesn't have a significantly higher secondary value is not great. Like if it's a 200, if it's an exclusive bottle at that price, it normally has a bit of a markup. Um, so like a Joseph Magnus cigar blend is 200, 250, something like that. Um, so that's a tough price point because you're really what you're buying at that point is $50 bottles that have a secondary markup. Those are the great ones. Um, and that kind of sucks. Yeah, you've got chance, Ben. you got chance. Would I ever collab with other whiskey YouTubers? Yeah, uh, Matt, who was in here just a little while ago, ADHD Whiskey, is doing Matt Madness this year. So um, I don't know what Matt Madness is. <laughs> Like I'm new, I'm new to YouTube. I don't, I, I saw some of the videos last year, but I'm trying to remember exactly what it is, but it's some sort of contest and you know, I will play to win. I'll probably suck at it because I don't even know what it is, but that starts in a couple of weeks, few weeks, and I'm going to be on there with him. And like, I was hanging out with a guy today off TikTok. We did the bourbon hunting in Indianapolis with some TikTokers. I also was hanging out with somebody that's got a big following here on YouTube and growing um, and on TikTok, we'll talk about that in just a second. That's where I got the curveball barbecue whiskey. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm open to collabing. I'll, I'll, I've had the Sagamore Rye tunes. I really like it. Oh, hey gamer, don't worry about support, man. You're supporting right now by being here, hanging out, talking in this chat. That's all the support I need. I appreciate it. And I, I mean, I don't think anybody ever told me I wouldn't get this far. Maybe I told me I wouldn't get this far, but that's all good. Elmer T. Lee. I wouldn't pay $200 for that. Uh, $300, David, is kind of my limit, honestly. $300 is like, that's the most I want to pay for a bottle of whiskey. And I'm not saying I won't ever pay more than $300 for a bottle of whiskey, but like I had a chance to buy, you know, somebody was asking me about, about buying a, a Lot B. And I was like, you know, I, if it was less than $300, I'd consider buying it. I'd consider it. I'm not 100% sure I'd pull the trigger, but I'd consider buying it at that price point. 
um, just just for the rarity and how excited somebody would be if I gave it to them or we opened it or something like that. But um, I'm not saying it's it's at that value. But that, that's kind of where it's like it doesn't hurt me so bad. That means I don't I can't buy bottles for a while, um, you know. But I'm lucky enough, you know, the channel's starting to make a little bit of money here and there. That's what bought all these bottles is, is you know the support and things so we can do the buy these bottles and do videos and stuff on them. Um, so I, you know, I have a little bit of a budget for bourbon. My budget's gotten a little bit better with a little bit of ad money from YouTube and stuff and some of the patron support, but it's still three, more than $300. You just pay in market. Like it's not going to be worth it. It's not going to be worth drinking at more than $300. It's just not. And, and, you know, there are exceptions to that. If I had the money, I'd pay two grand. Legal. Very rare. Just to, for the shock value when I pour it in Milan, I mean, try to drink it. When I open it and drink it, the shock value, sure, an OFC, okay. I, if I had it, I'm not sure I'd have it at the time, right? I don't just have that laying around spending on whiskey, but. Oh, Jay, $200 for Blanton's before I finish the copper. I get it, man. I get it. I, I you know, hmm. 105 for a Joseph Magnus cigar blend? A, if it was a cigar blend, now not just a Magnus, a cigar blend. Oh yeah, I know, I know, um, I know Trent, I know SLB. They're in our Discord, so uh, they don't like they don't like actively participate in our Discord. And I'm not sure, like I forget their names. Um, if he's just SLB in the in the thing, I think Trent's the younger younger gentleman, right? Um, I love their content. They have they have great content. But he's in our Discord. We have like a little content creator chat. It's kind of dead right now. I just haven't had a lot of time to really stay active in there. Uh, yeah, the problem lies in the market value. What accessory for whiskey drinking? Uh, yeah, so glasses matter. Now, this is not a Glencairn. This is a whiskey glass. It's kind of like a Glencairn. Um, this one, the glass matters. So if you're drinking neat, this matters. You know, ice balls, I like ice balls because they just don't melt um, as fast, so they don't water the drink down if you're doing it. So a good ice ball mold really helps. Is it clear ice ball? doesn't really matter that much. That's just for for show. Um, and then quality ingredients. If you're making, if you're mixing drinks, it, it makes a difference. Good evening, spirit and spice inside of the Venetian. I have not. Um, I tried to stay. Like I didn't see anything good on the strip, but I have not been in. I was in the Venetian the other day, but I didn't know that. Yeah, we're hanging out in Vegas. This is my Airbnb here in, in Las Vegas. Did my light? Why, why did that light keep going? And two of them have died. I don't know. Uh, didn't get a chance this time. Just did the local bars. Very lively crowd for a Jags game. Awesome. About to get that horse collector merch. I appreciate it. Thanks for the support. $300 max for us too. Patience building relation. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like it's, you know, that's just anything more than that. I, I Like honestly, I feel silly at $300 unless it's like super desirable. But over that, I'm just like, I feel like I'm getting robbed. Cocktail mixer sets that I had. I don't know. It's so weird. Like, y'all tell me, I've been thinking about doing some cocktail mixers, like doing a bunch of experiments, coming up with different, like, recipes and, you know, with videos and then making, like, a prepackaged cocktail mixer where you can just, like, get an old-fashioned and pour it with some spirits and, and, and have an old, you know, I just, I don't know. I don't know if somebody would be interested in that. We're just trying to figure out. Kurt is the dad. There you go. There you go. Um, it's a, I like his channel or their channel. It's good stuff. Will it nine year ride for three fifty? Ah, see, that's that's painful, but I might have to pull the trigger on that at three fifty. Like it's just, ugh. I've never had the nine year ride. The four year ride's pretty good. I've never had the nine year ride. Yeah, three hundred. Ah, that'd be. I, I would be. I would be agonizing about that one for sure. Oh, hit the like button. Thank you. I appreciate you promoting the like button. If I hadn't hit the like button, what are we even doing? I don't know. Um, all right, so I, I, the Frey Ranch is fantastic. I love the Frey Ranch. I just bought their rye, and I have not opened and tried it yet. Um, and I just bought a barrel strength single barrel that I'm excited about. Hey, Kale, thanks for swinging by. Take a sip of the beer. Valpo, outside, an hour outside of Chicago. That's good to know. I'm, I might, next time I'm in Chicago, I might hit them up. 
How much were the purple tops? Um, yeah, I, they are overpriced. I will, I'll give you that. Uh, they were 200-ish, a little over 200, I think. Um, and they're overpriced. You're right. I, I'll give you that. Um, I don't think, I think the one I've got at home is better than this one. Um, so I feel a little better about it. Is this one worth 200 and something dollars? Probably not. Also make a mess. Oh, I make a mess everywhere I go. What's up from Marietta? The land of Eagle Rare. What's up, Jason? A hoodie. So I did a hoodie. I designed a hoodie. I had it ready and I ordered a, like, I just ordered a sample and I just didn't, like, the print wasn't good. So I, my supplier, I don't love the hoodies. So I may, we may see about, I'm just, again, it just comes down to two things. Two things, time, right? We're, we're doing great growing the audience, but we're, we're spending all the time we have just trying to get good content out. And so, you know, we've grown so fast. You think, oh, we got 200,000 subs. We, you know, we figured all this stuff. We're still trying to figure everything out. Um, so I want to I wanna do a really nice hoodie, and I may have to work with somebody, and instead of, like, print on demand, I may have to have them made and then have them at the house and ship them out when somebody orders those to get it right because I didn't like the ones that the print-on-demand company was doing. So um, I want to do, like, a really nice, like, um, you know, some sort of really, really nice hoodie. Uh, it's just going to take, like, then you got to order. How many do you order? You order 100 of them? I, you know, what size breakdowns are they? Find somebody to make them. Like, it's just kind of a whole thing, right? South Bend in the house. What's going on? I don't drink mezcal. No. Uh, it's, I've had some Woodenville, but it's been a while. Dog collars and beer koozies. I think beer koozies would be pretty good. I don't know about dog collars. We need some more merch. We'll come up with ideas, Will. Get it to get to make a list, man. Make a list. Imagine looking inside with the signature brown descending into. Okay. Um, Bruce will pick Frey Ranch single. I mean, don't don't tempt me there, Jason. Don't tempt me. It might be. I might have to do that. New to bourbon in Alabama, what's the best starter tip for finding rare bourbons? Not the, it, the Alabama ABC drop. Like there's a there's a monthly drop. Make sure you go to Alabama's ABC website. Go to the monthly drops. Wait in line. That's your best bet. Outside of that, build a relationship with some liquor store, gas stations, and then you just check them every week. Find out when their drop days are. Check them every week. That, that is it. That is, that is the only way in the state of Alabama. I, I'm driving home, Richie, so I, I, all of these will be in the truck. So I drove here, and I'm driving to Austin from here and then home. So uh, ABC State. So Alabama's kind of in the same thing, right? It's state-run. It's good because all the prices are fair, um, but there's no building relationships. Christians from Louisville, West Georgia. Um, I mean, most of the stuff I get – like I've had good luck at the bottle shop. Um, Mr. B's in Columbus has been good to me. Uh, Frisky Whiskey, every once in a while I get something pretty good. Uh, Cole, it's been a pretty good stream. You know, it's, like I said, it's it's been kind of taped together so far, so it's a little little iffy just trying to make it work in an Airbnb, but so far so good. Uh, Jay, um, I, I am, I, I, I've got some connections there with the, the folks at Bunker Branding and Demolition Ranch and Off the Ranch and that. That sort of stuff. I, like at this point, we're just not selling enough merch to work with somebody like that. Is all like we're just not selling enough merch now. Like we started doing it a little different in the videos, and every time we put out a video, we get two or three orders. So, I mean, today's video went out. We got two or three or four orders today. Um, so if we can start selling a little a little more merch, then we can do that. But right now, those are guys that will print it, stock it, and ship it. Um, higher quality. So like our quality, our shirts are really really good quality, but the prints will be a little a little better quality if you go that route, but it just costs a lot more money because you have to make them ahead of time and then warehouse them and ship them out. And we just hadn't quite got there yet. Whiskey stoppers. What do you mean? Like a whiskey, like to go in the, you talking about like a cork? Are you talking about the coins that go on top of the glasses? Use hoodies 24 seven. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Moosehead lager. I haven't had that. Your Irish cocktail or drink? I, I haven't had that either. Mixer's 20. Oh. You talking about the the mixer's like 20 year? 
Is that what you're talking about? Like the 20, 20 year old Michters? I might, I might, it just depends on whether or not I have the budget for that. Like that's not a, you know, that's a, like, you gotta like, if something's a hundred bucks or 200 bucks, like I, I'm lucky enough to where I don't have to think about that too much. I mean, I got to slow down somewhere else, but if it's $1,200, like I gotta, I gotta rethink a whole lot of stuff, like, like mortgage payments and stuff, you know? Um, yeah, Frey Ranch would be a good one. We're going to do a Frey Ranch store pick. I don't know if it'll be next, but we're going to do one. The Godfather, usually with Scotch, but I use Rare Breed. Uh, we have heard a lot of people asking about Disarona drinks. So we need to try that. Starlight. The only Starlight I've had is the Carl T. Huber Cigarette. Hold on. I got to sneak. Ugh, man, there it goes. It took a second. Um... Carl T. Huber's Cigar Batch Amberana Finish. See, I, like now I'm all sorts of articulate. Uh, I didn't love that, but that's the only one I've made. The Bruisal Whiskey. Steven, it, it may happen at some point. It's going to be a little while. Well, we've got the, the store pick starting to come out. Vegas is killing me, man. Allergies or something. I don't know. My, everything's just so dry. Double X Fat Hoodie. Hey, I'm going to have to make them in big sizes. Or I'm not going to fit in one, so... May have to lose weight, fit in a hoodie. Um, downloading Discord back so I can join yours. It's fun over there. There's a lot of cool people in there, man. I, if you're not into it, I get it. But I don't know where you can get Blanton's in. It's Yeti style mugs. I like that reflection. We should do that. We I did some for my other business, um, but the, the problem is they're just so damn expensive. Like I pay a fortune for them. And so then I'd have to like sell the metaphor, but I, I do, I do use those. So like when I make my Jack and Cokes, I've got a little small Yeti like tumbler. Um, and I like making my Jack and Cokes in those or the big one. I'll make it in the big one if I'm, you know, if, if it's that kind of night and I want to double, um, because like the ice never melt. And so you just like, you don't have to keep adding ice and they don't get watered down. So I do, I do use, I use my Yeti stuff a lot. A bruisal stopper or even a poor nozzle? Poor nozzle would be fun. What if it's a poor nozzle, but it like did something to make you spill half the pour? And we, we, some of the folks in Discord were talking about like bruisal bottles because we just spill stuff everywhere. I thought that was really funny. I like that idea a lot. Um, what's the first drink that made you think start thinking about making videos? Um, really wasn't a drink. I we did a lot of like e-commerce videos where we were just sitting down and drinking a bourbon. And talking about e-commerce, and I just ended up every live stream for work, I would have a different bottle. I ended up with like twenty or thirty bottles, and nobody was watching our e-commerce stuff. Like it, it's every once in a while, one would get picked up by search, and it would do well. But if I released a really good video, I spent hours on it, get like two hundred views, and so I was just frustrated. And I was like, let's just try to do some bourbon stuff. Let's see if we can't learn and figure out how to get people to watch videos. And I started just piddling with bourbon stuff on the side, just kind of fun nights and weekends. And it started taking off on TikTok. And then I took six months off. And, you know, in June, we're like, let's start going serious into this. Buffalo Trace, one of my faves. Nice. Well, I appreciate, appreciate you hanging out there, um, Amani. Brewing company called Driftwood? I have not had that. Favorite YouTube bourboniers other than yourself? Um, you know, I watch a, a lot of folks make good content. Don't get me wrong, but I just don't have a ton of time. So I can't watch all of them. I try to jump in and support as many of them as I can. The ones I watch the most are going to be bourbon junkies, um, whiskey tribe, whiskey vault, um, and then mad at ADHD whiskey. Those, those are the ones that I, that kind of got me introduced to, to bourbon YouTube. Uh, the ones I, ones I watch the most. I'm happy two years. I don't, I, I'm assuming you mean like a 20 year pappy? How much would I pay for it or how much does it go for? Like, I don't know. Disarona and Corona. Y'all are putting Disarona on everything. Y'all are putting everything. Jack and Coca Cola, I hear it's pretty good. I, I I think there's something there. There's something, like, I think you're on to something. I'm going to have to give that a try. A lot of great whiskey started in Indiana at, at yeah, at MGP, right? Uh, what's the best whiskey to mix with Coke? I, I think it's Jack. Like, I don't think you can get better than Jack and Coke. don't think you can get better. Like, there's something magical about that. 
Yeah, I think a whole bar kit could be pretty cool, but it'd have to be like top quality because I've got like a few and I'm like, that's just garbage. So like I've got to do some research. We got to find like the best of the best. If I'm going to put my name on it, it's got to not suck. A mouse trap? Hmm. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what we'd do with that. By Bruiser Yeti. Okay. Yeah, like put, like whistle pig. Like what would we put on it though? Like, I, I don't know. Is it just my face? I don't. That'd be weird. That would be weird, right? I haven't had burning chair. That's your favorite beer. It's my favorite too. What is Bruzel? I guess I Bruzel. Uh, Bruzel is a YouTube channel. If you like, what is Bruzel? The business of Bruzel. There's not one. Um, it was a name I had for like this beer app that we were going to do back in the day. And it just never got, I had the logo, I had the name, it never got built. So we never built it. And I just sat on the name for like 10 or 12 years. And we were going to do this channel. We were going to do beer reviews, bourbon reviews, all sorts of stuff. And, and we probably still will at some point, but probably on separate channels. Um, and then honestly, the beer app, I'm thinking about reviving it into a bourbon app. I just need to come up with money because that's what it takes to make anything happen um, but that's what it is man it's it's nothing it's the fig newton of my imagination thank you chase and neat uh i am an auburn grad and apparently it's not a good night for our basketball team. super desi's new to the channel well thanks for hanging out with me uh can you do another survey gauge for a meet and greet we're gonna have we're gonna have a meet and greet going to happen. We're going to have a get together sometime this year. I'm going to try to make that happen. So I just right now through March, I'm just all over the place. Like I, I'm here in Vegas for three weeks. I'm in Austin for a week. Um, I canceled a couple of things I was supposed to go to in February because I'm like, I just need to crash for a little while. But then in March, I'm hopping in the uh, Lincoln and I want to go um the podcast has a, an event in Nashville I really want to go to. I'm hoping I can take the Lincoln and road trip that up there. And then we've got a little vacation with the family in Branson. So I'm going to drive the Lincoln over to that from Nashville. I'm missing half my vacation to hopefully go to that podcast thing. And then I'm going to road trip that back home. And then I may have to be back in Vegas for the last week of March and the first week of April. And then we can start planning stuff. Um, like I, I, I need a whole crew of like 15 people to make this stuff work. The Lincoln on my leg. Oh yeah. Yeah. Maggie, Maggie's where it's at. Oh, uh, I have not. Where are they located? And I mean, in Vegas, but I haven't, haven't heard of that. What's going on, sweet Oak? Uh, yeah, that's, that's why it has, it was a beer thing. That's exactly why it looks like a beer thing. And we're doing bourbon thing. I know it makes no sense. With, like, if you saw the original art for the channel, it was beer, bourbon, and barbecue. Like, we were going to do three different things. We started doing bourbon, and that took off. And it's like, let's just keep doing what's working. I know more about bourbon than I do beer or barbecue. I, I used to own a barbecue restaurant, but I, I used to own it. So, obviously, it wasn't wasn't good enough. Uh, please recommend a good first bottle that's not Buffalo Trace or Wild Turkey. So I've got a video here on the channel there, Alex, that goes over the top eight bourbons for beginners. It's top five bourbons for beginners, but I go over eight because I can't count. Um, and it goes over why I want you to try all of those. And some of those are Buffalo Trace and Wild Turkey, but it's going to be like Evan Williams Bottle and Bond. Um, benchmark stuff is, is Buffalo Trace. Um, what else was on that list? Evan Williams Bottle and Bond. Four roses, um, preferably like a small batch select or a single barrel if you can get it. Um, I, I forget all of the ones on the list. A lot of more Buffalo Tracer Wild Turkey. But. Am I a football fella? Uh, I mean, not NFL. I'm, I'm college football. What's up, Miguel? Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, my daily drinker, uh, other than the uh, Coors Banquets, if, if I'm sipping a whiskey by myself, it's going to be a Weller Antique. And, I, you know, I, I think Alex just gets that. My guess is, Ben, is he just gets that recommendation a lot. He's looking for something new. Uh, what is my day job? E-commerce. I'm in e-commerce. So we we build websites that sell things. So if y'all if y'all happen to be in a position that needs help with your e-commerce, let me know. New York price is equal secondary. It's that same in a lot of places. Barbecue would be awesome, Vince, too. And we may do that. It's Actually, let's talk about barbecue. 
because I hung out with a guy yesterday and a little bit today. I don't know if y'all Blazing Star Barbecue here. Um, he's on YouTube and on TikTok. And I, I went over to his house and dude just hooked me up with barbecue seasonings here. Like he just gave me one. So he makes these cool seasonings and uh, has pretty good distribution. Like he's building a nice business just off social media. Has great, like cool food truck and smokers and all sorts of stuff. And then he hooked me up with these barbecue sauces here that he makes. And so it's a lot, it's like a, most of his stuff is like a kind of an Asian inspired like Asian barbecue fusion kind of thing. Um, and they're, they're really good. He gave me like, we've tasted all of these in a video I'll have coming out in a month or so. Um, and so I was really excited. Like these are, these are going to be awesome. Um, and so we'll do some barbecue stuff at some point, but we'll see. I don't, the problem is, is bourbon folks. I kind of like, I kind of like irritating bourbon people. It's kind of fun. Um, but it's exhausting, you know, for them to get mad at me because, like, to, was it yesterday's video? Everybody's getting mad because we'll drop the ice in after he made the mixed drink, but he was just trying to splash it out and make a mess. They don't understand that. So it's exhausting. Me screwing up and messing up all the, the bourbon aficionado or barbecue aficionados, I don't, I don't know if I have the energy for that at this point. I uh, just got into whiskey a couple months ago and found my channel this week. Thank you. Love the Lincoln, man. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Um, we did, Coleman. We did talk about the barrel pick. It's ready. It's in the warehouse. I found a retailer. I have to build a website and get it connected to all of his stuff. And that is my main focus in life tomorrow. I don't know if it'll be done tomorrow. If I can get it done, if, if I can get it done, it will go for sale on Monday. Contact Rick at Ontel. I mean, hit me up. Like, if you're in the Discord, let me know. 2B, but not Las Vegas. I haven't tried 2B. Yeah, I'm an Auburn grad. I'm not in Auburn right now. I'm in Vegas. But, yeah, I'm, I'm an Auburn grad. I live in Opelika. Which bourbon do I look? Are there you are tasting on the channel? Okay, so it's not a bourbon. But the Blazing Star there gave me this Curveball Barbecue Whiskey. This is awful. This is awful. Not looking forward to that. Um, I don't know about bourbons. I like, we try to keep them to things that I'm going to like for the most part. Foolproof all day, chef Gary, all day, um, uh, all day, like not even close all day long, all day. Like Weller 12 is at the lower end of the Weller lineup. It line up. It's a good, it's good whiskey, but it's a lower end for me. 12, uh, or excuse me, foolproof and 107 are at the higher end for me with like single barrel CYPB in the middle, but closer to the higher end than the lower end. So, um, single barrel, barrel strengths are hard to find and, and kind of pricey, just single barrels, not the barrel strengths necessarily. Um, what state has the best barbecue? I mean, if you're into brisket, Texas is hard to beat, but I, I'm a pulled pork kind of guy. I, I like a good North Carolina barbe barbecue every once in a while, but it's not my go-to. So Memphis is pretty good, but like I, I would probably lean to like a Kansas City style. We Dowie or Martin? Uh, well, I, I grew up in Tallapoosa County, um, actually kind of in between Lake Martin and We Dowie, like Daviston, Alabama. Um, so, I, but I've spent a lot more time up toward Ellick City and Lake Martin. Mac, new to bourbon, wondering how not to get the burn when drinking. Um, there's a technique, man, but I'm really bad at this. I tried on the live stream one time, and it was comically, comically bad. Um, there, there is a way, right? And it just comes with experience. But I, air, oxygen, and breathing is is part of that as well. The decadence is all. I haven't had the decadence. I need the decadence. Jason, Hattie B's would be good, man. Um, we'll actually get some content worth a damn. Ah, it's all good, man. I I enjoyed Hattie B's. We'll have to if I get up through there. Like I'm trying to go to the podcast thing. If I get up there, I mean, I'll hit you up. We'll we'll try to get there. Try to do something. Chill filtered and non chill filtered. Um, well, chill filtering is basically they they're adding cold to it, and a lot of folks will claim that cold kind of kind of changes the whiskey. I I'd, I'd have to do a little research. I need to do a little research on that. We're going to do a video on chill filtering soon. I'll I'll have more info on it. 
Starting three with the 499 Super Chat, man. I appreciate it. And don't forget to hit that freaking like button. Um, so it's it's a little on the sweet side, but it is really, really high proof. Um, I I have the notes somewhere um, of of the details to it, but I, I prefer my bourbons a little a little sweeter. But it it's definitely got a nice oakiness to it. Um, so I, you know, we tried to balance that sweetness with with the oakiness. Um, and it's a, it's a three, it's, it's three different whiskeys. I think it's like five year and seven year and 14 year or something blended together. Um, something like that. So it's, it's a pretty good whiskey. Like I, I was trying to go, I've got this total wine barrel pick that's similar. That is just exceptional, like fantastic freaking bottle. And that's what I was going for. I don't think it's as good as that one. I'll, I, you know, if I'm being honest, I think that one's a, you know, a solid, Eight out of ten, uh, and I think ours is a you know six and a half, seven out of ten. Still a good bottle, not as good as what I was going for with that total wine pick. Haven't tried any Ragged Branch. Appreciate it, Hysteric. Barbecue. We need. To, I'm gonna have to do some barbecue stuff. Boss is actually an Auburn fan. She always has her hat on. When she, yeah, I bet she was excited when Alabama didn't make the playoffs. Uh, I, yeah, Jamie, I, I've been on there some, but like I've been traveling the last couple of weeks. So I haven't streamed anywhere. Um, and then this week I was going to try to stream today, but like I'm setting up at an Airbnb. I don't have my iPad. Like I just don't have the in infrastructure. So I got this one set up about 15 minutes before. It just took me forever to get this set up. Got it set up. And not to mention I'm screwed. Like normally I'm streaming at eight my time. I'm in Vegas at six my time. So I just didn't have a lot of time after work to get this thing set up and going. But we'll be back on TikTok when I get back um, to the house. I've, I've been streaming over there some. Not as much, right? Not as long. Um, TikTok, they banned me. Like, it just, like they've been giving, giving me some grief. So we've really been focusing on the YouTube streams. Um, I enjoy TikTok. But like if you get banned every other time you stream, it's not fun. Oh, there's a Hattie Bees here on the Strip. I didn't realize that. We just We had it when I was up in Nashville. Yeah, we were just talking about Smoke Wagon earlier. I bought some uncut, unfiltered right here. Um, it's, you know, this is made, this is MGP sourced whiskey. So there's a lot of MGP stuff out there. Um, Smoke Wagon MGP stuff is pretty freaking good, though, if you like MGP whiskey. Midwest grain products. But So basically look at any bottle. If it says it's distilled in Indiana, there's like a 99% chance it came from MGP. Um so it's, they're pretty good, Some, but it depends on like your brand, what, what's your level on their priority. If you're selling a lot of whiskey, you get more priority, you get the better barrels. If you're just getting started, you know, who knows what you're going to get. If you can't handle the burn, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because we were drinking that barrel pick today, doing the barrel pick with the liquor lineup, and we were drinking 112, 114, 116 proof samples and there was almost no burn on them. And it's just like, it just comes with experience. I, there's a technique and it may just be your body adapting to it, but also wonder why they call it chilled. If it's just filtered with cold, I, I think it is, it is cold. I think it is chill filtered. Like it is cooled down. Um, and I, so basically I think chill filtered, what it does is chill filtered will remove a lot of, and, and I'm I'm just speaking off the top of my head and I may be wrong. I want to do the research and do the video, but chill filtered basically means it like, um, it like removes a lot of the oils and fats from it, right? So to me, like to some people, it'll, you know, it might be an easier sipper or lighter whiskey, but to me, it adds a lot of like the thickness and the viscosity that I want in a whiskey. So I, I prefer mine to be, you know, unfiltered. Or at least non, you know, non-chill filtered. Um, love the sweeter stuff. Just got to convince wife I need another. Hey, I understand. I understand, man. Uh, most overrated bourbon. There are so many. How can I just choose one? Really? Um, overrated bourbon. I mean, we talked about Elmer T. Lee earlier. That's probably the one that I'm like super hyped. Just fine. Just, just fine. fine bourbon. $30, love it. $200, what are we doing? Where are we at? Why are we doing this? Um, that one probably is the biggest. Like, Pappy's is like crazy because it's like super hype. 
and it's good. I've got a Pappy's review coming out, and y'all, I'm going to get some hate. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to get some hate. Like, I I didn't say it was bad, but I'm still going to get some hate as to how I rated the Pappy's 15. I don't know when that video is releasing, but it's been shot, it was shot before I left, so it's been shot for a couple of weeks. Um, but, like, those are, like, crazy hyped, and they're really good whiskey. But if it's really good whiskey, but it's not $3,000 whiskey, that makes it overhyped. Underrated? Um, the benchmark stuff, um, not not H, but the other stuff. Um, I still think the Wild Turkey Rare Breed, Wild Turkey 101, Evan Williams Bottle and Bond, um, those are super underrated. What's your vision of your channel for the future? Oof. All right, I'm, I'm going to miss some questions because he's got he's got me on a you know a freaking hypothetical train here. Uh, what we would like to do at this point is a few things. Um, I've got some really cool app ideas that I think would really help bourbon enthusiasts. So I'm hoping to generate enough revenue to support building that app. I'm not going to go too much into what it is, but I think you'd be excited if you know it's like a ratings and review and a social network for bourbon enthusiasts. Um, I, I think we could do some really cool stuff there. Um, and then we want to continue to do barrel picks. We want to run experiments. I want to do stuff on, like, I really like whiskey tribe because they, they have a whole still and they're doing experiments and having fun. That's the kind of stuff I want to do. But, um, you know, we'll distill our own barrels or distill our own whiskey and put it in barrels and try different things and wait for years. Uh, and we may do our own label or something at some point, we're probably going to split the channel at some point and maybe do a scotch channel and a beer channel and a rum channel and a tequila channel. I won't be doing all of those, but we'll find people to do all of those. And we just, you know, a bartending channel or something um, and really take some of the lessons we've learned and the infrastructure to, to kind of scale those out because we, we think we could be successful with that content if we found the right on screen talent to do them. Um, and then just, you know, continue to build our influence with spirits and, and show people that can be fun. Like everybody, like everybody's so damn serious about it all. And it's not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be serious. It's supposed to be fun. Um, so we want to, you know, just, we just want to keep promoting and, and providing that, but we've got to, we've got to grow it to a level to provide some revenue to do all the really, really dumb experiments we want to do. Never tried old Forrester, 1910, 1920, 1920 is high proof. If you've never had it, uh, 1910 is going to be a double oak. So it's going to be a little oak here. Um, if you, you know, so it, I, I can't recommend, I don't really know, um, your, your bourbon history there, but just try like a hundred proof old Forrester. Like that's a good start too. Um, or an old Forrester, like single barrel, um, hundred proof is also exceptional. Um, if you can't, you know, if you can't find those and you just want to go with like something off the shelf, I don't think you'd go wrong with either of those. I just don't know which one you would prefer. Where is Nate? I thought Nate would be here. I'm missing Nate. Indiana whiskey is yummy. Sure. American single. I don't, I don't know what, what you're asking me there. Uh, malt Blanton's Blanton's Blanton's. I don't think Blanton's is the most overrated, but yeah, it's, it's definitely overhyped. Yes. Elmer T Lee at $40. Just buy it. That's, that's okay. I'll take that 40 bucks for Elmer T. Sure. Weller 107. Oh, Adam's just trying to Adam's just come on, Adam. Come on, Adam. I see you. I see you. Uh, that's uh, you, you just you just trying to poke me, man. You're hurting my heart here. Ironworks Barbecue, Texas. I'll have to give that a try. Uh, Old Forster Single Barrel. They're out there, man. I, I come across them quite often. So I don't. What bourbon's out of North Carolina? Couldn't even tell you. Evan Williams Single Barrel. I didn't love it, man. I didn't love it. I don't know if you're trying to say the underrated or the overrated on that. I much prefer the Evan Williams bottle and bond over the single barrel. Now I only had like one. They, they've done a bunch of vintages. The one I have, and I don't remember which one it was. It's just okay. Uh, Old Forster 100 Rye, very underrated. That's that's a good call. Um, I don't think I've had the 100 Rye. Um, I do have a barrel strength Rye waiting for me at home that I haven't tried either. Uh, yeah, I probably wouldn't go that far, Ben. I, if I have a hard time spending $300 on a bottle of whiskey, I'm definitely not buying a Gulfstream uh, G650. Not any Gulfstream. Uh, no, Vince, not, not me. 
I'm not. My wife's still at home. Hopefully nobody's laying next to her in bed. <laughs> My wife is getting ready for bed while I'm in bed with some wild turkey 101. Man's just sitting in bed. I can imagine he's sitting in bed with his reading glasses and his laptop and a wild turkey 101, maybe smoking a cigar. I don't know. I don't know if he goes that far. Uh, well, I'd, I'd really like Whiskey Tribe. I may try to, when I'm in Austin in, in like a week or two, I may swing by and try to hang out or just see the place at least. I don't know if they'll be there. They don't know. They, they don't know who I am. Uh, straight man for the both of us to play off of. Eh, you know, I can play that part if I have to, but yeah, you're right. You need somebody that kind of bounce the jokes off of. Uh, Whiskey Del Bach? I, I don't know what that is, Moulin. Fiddler from Atlanta. No, I have not. I've seen a couple bottles, but should I have grabbed it? Uh, the Remus Gatsby Reserve. I have a four, and I thought it was pretty good whiskey. I haven't rated it yet, but I thought it was pretty good. Bullet 10-year today for $45. I think that's a good bottle for that price. Thank you, Rom. The cigar was earlier. The wife wouldn't be too happy. If I, well, I mean, if you haven't taken a shower yet, she still smells it. If she's not a smoker, she's still smelling that thing while you're in bed. Appreciate it, Coleman. I, I, it uh, took us a lot longer to get there. Jill didn't think that was funny. Okay, she, Jill's watching. She just texted me said, that's not funny. When I said, I hope nobody's laying in bed next to her. I figured when, when I said it, I was like, oh, she's, she's probably late enough. She's watching. Uh, what would be the cost of a doctor disrespect if I was trying to get my hands on one? I, like, I think they're like MSRP was like 80 bucks and it's not good enough for an $80 whiskey. Like, just let me be straight with you. I thought it was a pretty good whiskey for a celebrity release, but I was not judging anything about cost. I was just thinking this is above average whiskey, um, had a good mouthfeel to it, you know, had some decent flavors, good celebrity release, but 80 bucks is a lot of money for as good as it is. Now, if you just like Dr. Disrespect and you want to find one, I don't know what the secondary value on those are because they're really hard to come by. But I have it on very good authority that they're come, going to come out with a second batch. And I, my assumption is the second batch would be bigger. Now, I don't know how good it is, but <laughs> appreciate it, Vince. Take it easy. Uh, again, I don't, I don't know any bourbons made in North Carolina. The Gatsby is different Remus Reserve that I don't know. I haven't had the Remus Reserve then. Not the Gatsby. Did I say Gatsby? Okay, I haven't had the Gatsby. I've had the Remus Reserve. I have not had the Remus Gatsby. You're right. That's the fancier one in the cardboard box, right? Uh, haven't had that. I'd love to have that one, but I haven't had it. Jura? Haven't tried that either. Take it easy, Adam. Delbach is an Arizona distillery. I've checked. I haven't looked for it. Is that something I should buy? I'm out here. Maybe I can find it. Appreciate it, Igloo. Got an old elk weeded barrel pick and a Buffalo Trace in Nashville. Nice. I, those old, the old elk weeded I've got is really good. And Buffalo Trace at 30 bucks, not bad at all. It's also on John J. Bowman single barrel. I like the John J. Bowman stuff. I don't think it's a little different to me than the normal Buffalo Trace. I know technically it's supposed to be Buffalo Trace Distillate they took to Virginia. They redistilled and aged. It's got a little different flavor to it. Um, I can see how some folks might like it better. Um, I think it's not quite as like bright fruit sweetness as, as the stuff made by Buffalo Trace. I don't like it as much as that, but I still like them. Uh, they're still really good whiskey. Uh, $59 for a Willet four-year rye. I would say so. I'm not a huge rye fan, but I think that's a nice, mild, mellow rye. Um, could you find a better rye for $60? Probably. I couldn't name that rye because um, the Willet stuff is just its just pricey, right? Um, but like, um, and I don't know what these cost, but like Sagamore rye, really, really good. I like that rye a lot. Uh, Michter's rye is a really good rye. Um what else do I have on my shelf at home that's a good rye? And I, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, for 60 bucks, you can find a lot of good ryes. And that one's pretty good. Don't pay secondary. I've seen them for like 100, 120 bucks. Now they seem to be everywhere, though. So, favorite Buffalo Trace product? Uh, William LaRue Weller. 
or Weller Antique 107. Chattanooga is doing 95 proof Cabernet finish. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of finished, and I'm not a huge fan of Chattanooga. Uh, they got got a lot of malt. They use a lot of malt in theirs, and I, I'm just not a big fan of the of the flavors. Um, yeah, so the Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend just dropped like a weekend before this past one, or maybe this past weekend in Alabama, and I wasn't home to get one because I could. So I could have got one at MSRP, and it was gone. So or I was gone. Uh, they do some interesting stuff. American single malts that are mesquite and it uh, doesn't sound good, but maybe it is. Sometimes things don't sound good, and they are. Anything new? Ah, everything's new, man. Euros from Scotland. Okay. Um, haven't tried it. What's going on, Douglas Carver? All right, we're going to hang out here for just a few more minutes, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go try to get this website up so I can sell my barrel pick that should be coming hopefully soon. Uh, craft distillery, about 30-ish bucks. Had to sip right down the drain. Uh, okay. Bourbon's from Ohio. Haven't had Watershed. Um, I've heard of Watershed, but I haven't had that one. John Bowman tastes similar to Burning Chair. Yeah, I haven't had Burning Chair, so that would be, that's interesting. Um, I, I've i kept my eye out for Burning Chair. I just haven't even seen it. Um, I've done some a little bit of distilling, but not a lot. And so we'll we'll try. We're going to try to get a location um, a, like sometime this year or next year. I got to save up a down payment, but I'm hoping to buy a building. I don't want to rent. I really want to buy one so we can be there and we can do stuff. Um, I've got my eye on a building. I don't know. We may end up trying to just buy some land and build something. But I need a commercial location to do some of the really dumb things I want to do legally because we're trying real hard to stay above board on anything. So um, that's, you know, part of part of that to build. Maybe we'll build a still and play around and, and do some stuff. Yeah, so Joshua, I'm at, at my Airbnb in Vegas. I just rented an Airbnb. I'm out here for like a month, uh, three plus weeks. And so I just rented a house. And this, this is the house that I have rented out here. So, um, you know, it's not quite as exciting as my normal background. I had it a little nicer, but the lights went off. I had some cool lights back there, so it was all colorful, but the batteries only lasted like an hour, and we've been going for a couple. Oh, Victor's doesn't disappoint for sure. Sammy Claus? I have not had that. Is that like a store pick somebody did? Sounds like a tater sticker. Southern Star out of Statesville is the best North Carolina. Nice. Bourbon tater thing and the stuff behind that. I mean, I don't really, like, I don't know what's going on with bourbon tater stuff, but what it, what it boils down to is, in general, there are a lot of people that think the way they think and the way they live their life is the only way you should anybody should ever live their life. And they're very right. And anybody that does anything different than that or has different thoughts than them is somehow inferior to them. And so there are just a lot of people in general in the world that are just kind of elitist in that way. And there's a lot of them into bourbon the way you should do it and this is the only way you should do it and you're an idiot if you do it any other way and if you wait in line you're dumb if you pay secondary prices you're dumb if you collect you're dumb if you're reselling it on the secondary market you're dumb but realistically none of that's true right just do what you want to do like i agree a lot of the things i do are, is dumb like waiting in line overnight for a bottle of whiskey dumb but it's not as dumb as getting on the internet and hating on everybody else. You know, at least I'm trying to be positive about it. So, um, I, you know, I don't, you know, folks, I mean, some folks will call me a tater. I don't care. Like, it's fine. I may, I'm, I'm probably going to design a bourbon tater t-shirt. Probably what we're going to do. Put those out. Just embrace it. We'll own it. I'll trademark bourbon tater and then I'll sue them every time somebody mentions it in a comment. Yeah. Well, we're trying to figure it out. Um, Mixture Celebration Sour Mash with an MSRP of six grand. That is one I will not own. I will be, I'll be honest with you, Ben. I will not own that one. What bourbon should I buy for $50 right now? Wild Turkey Rare Breed. Go get it. Uh, yeah, we, we actually had, did an Old Smoky Moonshine video. Should be coming out soon. I, I found their apple pie. Um, it's really low proof, but man, it's good. Lord have mercy. Um, it was like, that's honestly the old smoky apple pie moonshine 
was probably the best flavored, we'll call it a whiskey, the best flavored alcohol product I've tried so far. Like just in a glass, like just pour that over ice or just throw it in the fridge and pull it out and drink it. Probably the best one that you just don't even need to mix with anything. Uh, yeah, we I've tried Old Elk weeded bourbons. I haven't had a lot of their stuff though. Yeah, I, we got I got some smoke wagon uncut unfiltered here. So we did grab some of that and some Frey Ranch. Um, there's a beer that Sam Adams made. I haven't tried that. Sounds good. Doc Swenson. I have some Doc Swensons at the house. I really like them. Uh, I haven't done a video of them yet, but I, the Doc Swensons I have are pretty good stuff. That's a terrible Venn diagram. Yeah. I know you're talking about like idiots. Yeah. Uh, a plethora of traditional moonshine. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure I'm not really connected in the moonshine scene, but it's not. If I was looking for some, it wouldn't take me much effort. Jigs, what's going on? If like a good wick, he makes me a tater, <laughs> put some butter and chives on this bad boy. I like it. As an elder nerd, I've spent many nights waiting in line for nerd movie premiere. Exactly, exactly. Um, it's just like, why? Why you just got, like, I don't, I just don't understand why people have put so much energy into just being negative all the time about anything. Like, if, I, if I'm swiping through TikTok and somebody's doing something I don't agree with, like, it, it happens. Like, somebody doing something or saying something I don't agree with. As long as it's not about me, which happens more than I'd like. I just keep swiping. I'm just like, oh, okay, that I don't agree with that. And then I just move to the next video, and I was like, oh, that's good, you know. And it's like I don't even know why you would just stop and and kind. Of, I mean, we do use it to our advantage some, but it's just like lower. I'll never understand that. Everybody into bourbon is a tater. There you go. Bumbu rum, nice. Um, I'm gonna get more into rums. I we may do a rum channel at some point. I like rums. I get in trouble with rum. I'm immune to bourbon. I get in trouble with rum. So rare breed recommendation. Go get it. Yeah. Castle and Key restaurant. I do have a restoration rye. Now mine's a store pick. It is just like overwhelming rye. So if you like rye, spe rye spice, it was just all rye spice. It's not my thing. Like I like ryes that are a little tame, a little more like bourbon-esque. Rise, you know, the caramel flavors with a little rye and just a rye bomb. Now, I can see how somebody might like that. I'm just not that guy. Mini Blantons, uh, so they, they pop up every once in a while. So Alabama will have them. And when you go to a bourbon drop in Alabama, if they have them, you can get two. Um, they're probably once a year, maybe twice a year, they'll show up in a drop and you can just pick up a couple of them. Weller Single Barrel. I have one at the house. I haven't opened yet. Um, I've drank it. I went to a bar in Vegas, or I, I w went to Cleaver at a business function. Somebody else was paying, and they were like $20, $25 pours. And I think by the time I finished talking it up, the, the whole table we were at finished the bottle. Um, but it was, it was good stuff. Luckily, I wasn't paying for it. But $25 a pour at a restaurant in Vegas is pretty cheap. They had CYPB, and it's like $75, $80 a pour. Uh, and I thought that single barrel was better. Not a big fan of French oak staves there, Kayak. Uh, I, I think the Baker's is okay, but I'm just like anything French oak, I'm not usually a fan. Every once in a while, something will surprise me, but I'm not usually a fan. Of it. Yeah, it's exactly right, Hysteric. And it, it's, you know, it's funny, like there's certain people that they, they won't even tag me anymore. They just like, it's almost like subtweeting, but they're like sub TikToking. And they're addressing me. Like, you know, they're like, as soon as I put out a video, two days later, they're putting out a video talking about something that I just put out a video about, but not mentioning, you know, the channel or anything, but just like still at the same time, kind of shitting on what I did. And I'm like, okay, like, I, you know, it's fine. Favorite beer. Uh, this is my regular sipper right here. I do love like a really good brown ale. So like a Cigar City Maduro, you know, something really thick and sweet. But those are just hard to come by. This is like my go to the gas station or grocery store and pick up a beer kind of drink right here. Um, Dale Box sounds bad, but they do some great stuff. Now I'll, I'll have to check it out. 
I know. That's what I'm saying. Like Douglas, I, the, honestly, that's the. I think that's the thing that's made us stand out the most is we're just having a good time. Like, like most of these folks are all negative, and it's like if they were just having a good time, they'd get more views because nobody wants to hang out. Uh, only people want to hang out with folks that are always negative or folks that are negative. Pauliner German beers. I did not drive the Lincoln, Joshua. So we took it to Kentucky. We had a few problems. I've got most of those problems fixed. I'm having the fender skirts painted there at a body shop. Um, I've got a hubcap restored. My brother in law is helping me out with that when I'm gone. I'm hoping to take it on the next trip to Nashville, um, but it just depends on whether or not it gets done by the 1st of March. I hope so. I would be disappointed if it's not. But I took it back. I had to replace the thermostat um, housing. I ordered a steering gearbox where steering gearbox is leaking. That came in, but I haven't installed it. So I got to find time in the two weeks I'm home before that trip to get it installed and get the car aligned. Um, and then I had to redo the PCV system because it was, you know, some problems. But um, Oh, yeah, man, I love Baker 7. I love the old Baker 7 um, better than the single barrel stuff. But honestly, the single barrel stuff still really good. Um, but, yeah, seven's great. If you like a sweeter bourbon, what mix? All the mixers are very similar. Um, so I say very similar. Probably not the sour mash, but like the American whiskey or the bourbon are both going to be exceptional to me. Well, blind light. David, that would actually be fun. That's actually a fun idea. I like that. You should do that. We should start a blind flight bar. You just come in, you pay X dollars, you get a blind flight. You you have to tell us our notes. If you guess everyone, they're free. That'd be fun. Appreciate it, Kayak. Scotch drinker who watches every video. Well, we're going to start doing some scotch. I'm not going to do scotch, though. You don't want to hear my opinions on scotch. I'd test, I, every scotch, I'd be like, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. Um, I get how some folks could like it. It's just not not for my palate. So we're going to we're gonna try some different stuff to add some scotch into the mix. But I appreciate you watching all the videos. Love Newcastle. It's been a while since I've had Newcastle. Causes cancer, so they changed it. Well, I don't, then I'm glad I didn't. Cancer tasted great. Exactly. Just hang out, Cal Pope. Nah, Brandon, not not tonight, man. I did. I'd have. I don't think I have enough of these left. I only had like six or seven of these left. That wouldn't be enough for me. E. H. Taylor single barrel, really good bottle. Miles, you scored. Hopefully, you didn't overpay for it, but uh, you know that's between you and your accountant. Uh, but great bottle, man. Enjoy it. Eagle Rare, neat for the stream, Daniel says. Awesome. Uh, good whiskey for cherry flavor notes. So I, I get a lot of cherry notes on the Weller stuff to me. Like it's like a bright, sweet cherry. Um, a lot of a lot of the Weller stuff does that for me. Um, outside of that, what's going to be like the most like cherry forward because bourbon, a lot of bourbon will have like a, like a caramel forward note. Like that's really common. You have a lot of like Elijah Craig and stuff has like toffee notes to me, um, which is very distinctive. So I can usually pick those out. Um, I'm trying to think what would what would be a the, the Weller stuff, though, is really, really cherry forward for me. If I wanted a, a supper, not a super nice 10 year bourbon to celebrate, celebrate with for getting my first job, Eagle Ray. Get your Eagle Rare. If you can find it, it's like thirty to fifty dollars usually. If you can find it, you can't get it everywhere, um, but that would be a good one. Um, a lot of folks would tell you a Russell's Reserve Ten, but Russell's Reserve Ten has a lot of oakiness, like a little bit of bitter oakiness to me. So I I like those, and I think that Eagle that that actually has a nice cherry note on it. The Russells, the you know the the uh, a lot of the wild turkey stuff can have some cherry notes on it. But it it like it gets really oaky to me at like ten years and older. Um, so Eagle Rare Ten. What else do I have? A Henry McKenna Ten. Some folks love it. Some folks hate it. So um, that one that one might be proceed with caution. Um, trying to think what else has a ten year age statement. We were talking about Widow Jane, but that's again that's got like kind of a minerally George Dickel taste. Some folks like it. Some folks don't. So give me some good ten year ideas in here. If he can't find an Eagle Rare. Put Will on the spot. Yeah, what see, we were setting around, we were filming a bunch of videos there, Douglas. We had come in, he came in to help me batch videos because I had to get, I had to shoot 
what did we do? Three. I think we had to do like 12 or 15 shorts. I think we ended up filming, filming 17, but I had to film like 15 shorts and like seven long form videos to get me through while I'm here in Vegas. Cause I can't, I don't want to film with this backdrop. Don't really want to stream with this backdrop, but I want to hang out with y'all. So um, he was just talking, he was down there talking crap. And I was like, what did, what did you say to me? I was like, let me fire up the camera. Let's get this going. Um, so it, it's fun having him there. And I, I, I enjoyed having him in the video. So we may add him into a few more things. He's, he's quiet though. He's got to speak up. We got to get the microphone louder for him. The toasted sour mash. Yes. Um, it did well in a blind I did against other toasteds, but in general, I don't like it as much as like their toasted uh, bourbon. Now, I'm assuming you're talking about Michter's. Having fun, Stephen. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, Michter's American is a good one. Uh, does bourbon become acquired? I don't, I'm not sure I understand the question. Does it, is it an acquired taste? Is that what you're asking? $64.99 for E.H. Taylor single barrel? Wow, man, that's awesome, Miles. Congratulations. Pop it open and enjoy it, or look at it on the shelf, whatever you're into. Uh, maple whiskeys besides, now, I don't know. I haven't even tried the the knob maple. Couldn't tell you. Favorite Woodford Reserve bottle? Probably right now, the bottle I've got on my shelf that I like the most from Woodford is very fine rare. So it was like their master distiller stuff from a year or two ago. It's low proof. I want to say it's like 80, 90 something, 80 or 90 something proof. Um, but man, it is just like, it is just different. Like that, I can't even explain. I can't even remember the tasting notes. It's been a while since I've drank it because I'm getting so low um, on it. But that is that is a fantastic bottle. Uh, yeah, Brandon. So we try to live stream at least once a week. Um, and we try to do them on Mondays. This week is a little different. Um, just cause I'm traveling. So I didn't do it last week. I will not be able to stream again next week. Um, or the week after that. So I'm not going to get to stream for the next two weeks, but then we should be back on a regular schedule for a couple of few weeks. Like it's just unfortunate. This is not my full-time gig, right? Like I have, um, a, a business that I'm trying to run and we're trying to grow. And I just have a lot of commitments this year that unfortunately keeps me from bringing, being as regular as I would like with these streams. But I've got a lot of ideas for the streams once we get to being regular. But I, I just don't, there's no way for me to get out of the travel. Widow Jane is a good 10-year bourbon. It, 10 cup 10. Um, I think the, um, what am I thinking about? It's not 10 cup, bullet 10 year. That's actually a pretty good one too. It's like that $40, $50 range. Jack 10, yeah, but you can't find that. So I think the bullet, Bullet 10 is another pretty good one to me. Early Times Bottle and Bond is actually great, um, but the old one, like it's changed hands. So it went from Brown Thorman to Sazerac. The old Sazerac bottles were better. The, the new ones are good. The, the new Sazeracs are good. The old Brown Thormans were better. Bottle and Bond. So it, it means quite a few things, but Bottle and Bond means basically that it was, um, all the grains were grown in one growing season, um, it was distilled and then aged in a federally bonded warehouse for at least four years, and then it was bottled at 100 proof. Yeah, every bottle of VH, I mean, especially single barrel, like those get on up there. So what got me started in my bourbon journey? Jack and Coke, man. That was it. Appreciate it, John. Horse collector shirt. Nice. Those are, I love those. Love those shirts. One of Jill's favorites. The knob is great. Yeah. Knob Creek would be a good one. That's a good one too. Once your palate acclimates to alcohol burn. Yeah, exactly. It, it, that's, I mean, you get rid of the burn by just trying it. Uh, I don't, I just, I have not found a Johnny Walker. I'm not a big like Irish whiskey fan. I did try a red breast on the lot last live stream. I think that was really good. And so I'm like, that one's so good. I'm like, okay, I'm, I may have to start. All of my Irish whiskey experience has been just cheap stuff, right? Just shelters. And so that red breast was good enough to where I'm like, okay, I may need, I may need to start exploring these Irish whiskey. I don't think I'll ever be a fan of scotches because the flavors are just so off-putting to me. But I think there's something with Irish whiskey. I've just got to get to better stuff. 
So I'm sure we'll be exploring more Johnny Walkers over time. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof B522 and a Maker's Mark B RT01. Ooh, um, I, I'm just not a huge fan of the Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs. Like, I like them, but they're just not great. So if I had those two set in front of me, I'm opening up that BRT01. I've not had that one, but I really like the FAE stuff from the year before. Yes, Justin, I've had some honey barrel finished whiskeys. Um, Redline makes a really good one. I really enjoyed their honey barrel finished. Um, I probably don't have a ton of them. Like I, I want to say I've tried two or three, um, but that Redline is probably the one that I like the most. Like it's really subtle. Um, you get a nice honeycomb, you know, flavor kind of on the finish of it. It's really good. Favorite can I don't have a favorite Canadian whiskey. I, Maker's Mark. I don't. Is that like sacrilegious? I'm not real sure. Um, I haven't gotten into Canadian whiskey. Every time I try Canadian whiskey, it's bad. Every time I try Canadian whiskey, it's bad. So, I, I, like, I'm not saying all Canadian whiskey is bad. That's not what I'm trying to imply at all. I think it may be kind of like like uh, Irish whiskey. I just got to find the right ones. Like, maybe that's what it is. Bullet, you don't like Bullet none? The Bullet 10 year is pretty good. There's a 10 cup 14. And I'm not, I, like, I, I've got a bullet, a normal bullet. I haven't opened it, but the 10 year was all right. Appreciate it, Douglas. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's not easy, man. It's just like go all the time. So, favorite daily drinker available 30 to 40 ish dollars. Wild Turkey 101, uh, Evan Williams Bottle and Bond. Uh, you can like twenty something dollars. You like the Evan Williams Ball and Bonds like seventeen bucks. Uh, Wild Turkey One Hundred One is what twenty five to thirty bucks. Um, all of the benchmark stuff is like twenty to twenty five dollars. You could just tear those up. Um, so thirty to forty ish. Like, what am I going to go get at thirty to forty ish? That's available all the time. That's great. I, you know, I think those are probably the ones I would go for if that was my budget. Save a few dollars. Yeah, hundred proof. I, I I thought I mentioned hundred on bottle and bond. It's got to be a hundred proof too. I may I may not said that. Sorry about that. Fifty one. Well, that's bourbon. Any bourbon has to be fifty one percent corn mash. So if it's bottle and bond bourbon, it has to be fifty one percent. I need. I didn't have the cash strength. I forget the one I had. I forget the one I had. It's at home, um, but it's good stuff. Bradley just got my first E H Taylor. Awesome man! Congratulations. Open that sucker up. Uh, old granddad bonded. Uh, I thought it was good. I thought it was good for the price. It didn't blow me away like a lot of folks. And and so I feel like I value like the mouthfeel, the consistency and the complexity of it a little more than most people. And I'm sensitive to oak. And so too much oak um, just kind of ruins a whiskey for me. You'll see in my pappy's video we got coming out here soon. Like, I dock it because I'm like, this is fantastic, but it's just a little too much oak. Like, it's just a little too old. Like, take a couple of few years off of it, and this would be better. And so, I, like, with that with that old granddad bonded, I thought it was just a, it was good. All the flavors were good. It was just a little simple. Like, I just didn't get a big evolution or a great mouthfeel out of it. But it, that was a neck pour. It's sitting. I'm going to have to try it again. Apple pie moonshine. Nice. Um, we just did a video on that. Should be coming out soon. Uh, recommendation for distillery tours. Any of the big ones are going to be good. Small ones are hit or miss, right? But any of your big boys, uh, Wild Turkey, you know, Buffalo Trace, those, any of those big ones are going to be good. Booker's Kentucky Tea Batch. I've not had that one yet. Just scored an Eagle Rare yesterday. Sipping it now. Awesome. Make, no, no, no. I, I, I didn't mean to imply that Maker's Mark was Canadian. Somebody asked what my favorite Canadian was, and then we talked about Maker's Mark. So I may have just blended those together. Wasn't, wasn't what I was trying to imply. Sorry. A lot, of, a lot of questions, a lot of topics, man. Sorry about that. Uh, most expensive bottle of bourbon you have tried? It's, it's got to be the Pappy 15, I think. It's got to be that. Um, how do you learn to pick up all the notes on bourbon when smelling it? If you just smell it. Okay, so with smelling... There's a great video somebody posted the other day. I think it might have been 60-second bourbon review. When you're smelling a bourbon, what you want to do is smell it with each nostril. So, and, and how they explained it, and again, you'll find that video. It's a good video. Your body 
like switches nostrils throughout the day. Like it will, it has a dominant nostril. Like you are only really breathing through one nostril, or at least smelling through one nostril at a time. Um, and so as you're sniffing and your body changes, which one. So what you want to do is you want to smell it on one side, smell it on the other. So like right now, this nostril is dominant earlier today when I was doing a barrel pick, it was the other nostril and then smell it in the middle in case you're in transition is how they explained it. So it's a, it's a really cool. And so like, as far as picking up notes, it helps to just read other people's notes. So find the distiller's notes, find somebody else's. Uh, notes on it and then smell it and see if you can pick them up. Cause there's some notes like I, you're, I'm never going to say something tastes like baking spice. So like, what the hell does a baking spice taste like? I don't know. Like I, maybe I need to go figure that out. Right. So hit it. Say my nose is in transition. Now this nostril is starting to pick up notes a little better. So it's um, it really is just reading other people's notes and this one smells like baking spice. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It, this one smells like oak. A little bit of tea. And I'll, honestly, I'm getting a little rye spice on this one. So good whiskey. Bradley Barnard with $4.99 Super Chat. Thank you for the support, man. Is the Weller line worth the chase? Yes, they're good. They're not worth secondary, but if you're, like, you're just spending some extra time hunting them, Keep hunting, man. They're they're good stuff. The special reserve is not my favorite. That's not a great bottle. Don't overpay for that one. Uh, Weller twelve. Some people love it. I'm not a huge fan. It's got a little too much oak, and the proof is a little too low. But all the rest of them are really good whiskeys. Um, I wouldn't pay you know five, six, seven hundred dollars for any of them. But you know, full proof is fantastic. One hundred seven is fantastic to me. Uh, the single barrel CYPB are both really. You know, pretty good, pretty good pours. I like the foolproof in the 107 better than them, though. Uh, yeah, you want to let it air out a little bit. So it helps to pour it in a glass and let it sit for a little bit. Um, and that'll just let some of that alcohol kind of dissipate off of it. So you're just not, you know, picking up just all alcohol in your in your sniffs there. Yeah, um, Almanza, uh, I, I love an old-fashioned. Dream business is opening up a distillery of your own. I, I mean, I would like to do whiskey things. A distillery comes with responsibility. And so I think it would be fun. But at the same time, it's really hard to do good whiskey in mass. Like you just have to have a lot of money to sit on barrels for a long time. And you just don't know if they're good until years have gone by. And so, yeah, but I like, do I want the responsibility of that? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Cause I, if my whiskey sucks, I'm just going to pour it all out. I just, I'd have a hard time selling it. So um, it'd be fun. Like I wished I had a distillery. You might just go buy one that's already running. Right. And maybe that's what I do. Uh, that probably not. What do you think of Knob Creek and Garrison brothers? I like Knob Creek stuff. I think Knob Creek stuff's good. Uh, Garrison brothers. I got to be in the mood for it. Like I like it. But like Texas whiskey is its own thing. And I just kind of got to, it's, it's, you know, those flavors, those kind of Texas whiskey flavors, I've got to be in the mood for. I do like them. It's just not like something I drink every day. Was fortunate enough to get a Blanton straight from the barrel on a recent trip. Awesome. That's a good bottle right there. Like I, most of the Stag Junior batches I open, I think the Blanton straight from the barrel is better than them, most of them. Just getting into bourbon this year. I've always typically been a Scotch guy, but having loved bourbon hunting videos. Thank you. Um, I'm having a good good time with the bourbon hunting videos. I just filmed one. Like all of this stuff's coming out in a video, and then as we leave here, we're gonna shoot two more. I'm gonna go bourbon hunting in like Arizona and Texas and New Mexico and stuff as we as we drive back toward the house. So that'll be fun. Maybe go down. I think Jill's coming in this weekend. We're gonna go to Disney um, over in California. And so I may just try to find the best old fashioned in Disney um, in California. That, that'd be kind of fun. I don't think I can find any good bourbon there, but unless any of y'all got any like invites to that super top secret bourbon club that Walt Disney founded. Uh, what good recommendations for a good daily sipper? Again, um, look at the video where I've like the top five bourbons for beginners. Uh, it's a long form video on the channel. Shouldn't be that old. I go through eight bourbons and I tell you why. I want you to try all of those. And then I want you to give me some thoughts on it. And then come on a live stream. 
tell me which ones you liked and which ones you didn't, and then we can start getting, you know, something kind of tailored to your palate. Oh, none, none with the $2 super chat. Appreciate it, man. Let's see, where was I? What's top dollar I should pay for a Weller 107? If Weller 107 is $100 or less, I just buy it. Like if I see it for un under 100 bucks, I will just buy it. I, you know, after that, it's like, it's getting a little nuts. Best way to help with nosing whiskey is to go to cooking spices in the kitchen, line them up, smell one, then smell the whiskey, and see if it's in there. Right, don't grab the pepper. That's a good point. Good night, Moolight. I'm probably about to have to call it, too. We have gone for two and a half hours tonight. Long live stream. You get bonus footage. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Canadian whiskey, but I think, Shiloh, I just haven't had the right ones. I've not got a horse soldier yet. I've almost picked it up a couple times, but I haven't quite got there yet. I'm going to get it sooner or later. Uh, yeah, the bourbon drops come up in Alabama every month. So they just had one like last week. So it'll be next month before there's another one. Uh, I, I, Braden, I was here in Las Vegas. So I missed the drop this month. I wanted that cigar blend from Joseph Magnus, but I was here. So upstate New York had great bottles. Nice. Buddy of mine was checking out the local go-to spot when the owner pulled out a Pappy 10. He started freaking out because he thought it was for him, but it was for the owner's friend in front <laughs> Uh, the difference between Jack and Coke and Jim and Coke. Yeah, it, that, like, it's still nerve-wracking. Like, it's like, this is obvious, but it's still, because you're like, what if I get it wrong? I got a lot of confidence, but what if it's wrong? So it, it was really fun. I like those blinds. Some of the blinds we've done have, have it done as well. That one is probably the best blind video we've done. Um, so that's, you know, it's kind of fun. Mixing Jack and Jim Coke, good video. Which do you prefer? Oh, I'm I'm a Jack Daniels fan. I don't like I don't mind Jim Beam, but I I'm a Jack Daniels fan when it comes to Jack and Coke. So when it comes to whiskey and Coke, obviously I like Jack Daniels and a Jack and Coke. Wouldn't make sense to have anything else. Um, you should hit up some of the bourbon heads to check on this. That's a good call. I should do that. Good call, Carlito. What's going on? How do you pack your bottles you find? I, like, if I'm flying, I got to put them in a check bag. So if you watch the last bourbon hunting in Las Vegas video, you'll see how I packed those. In that video at the end, I packed them in a suitcase and checked them. With these, I don't have to fly. I'm driving. So it's not a problem. Yeah, so I was just under the weight limit with that bag. Like, literally by, like, a few pounds under the weight limit. Uh, the sealable plastic sleeves, I just usually use clothes. In that one, my daughter had a bunch of stuffed animals we'd won at Circus Circus. So I was able to just use that to, to stuff them. But usually just around a bunch of clothes, overstuff the back, you know, the the um, the checked bag. I literally went and bought a bag to check to stuff all this crap in. But it's tough. Like we probably need to come up with some really good travel solution there. Didn't get the truck with the cigar blend. That sucks. Love Arizona, Trevor's Pitch, and Phoenix City Grill or must stops in Scottsdale. Awesome. Bradley Bernard to the Five Proof Club. Bradley, make sure you get into the Discord if you're not already. Um, hit up Bruzel Will. Make sure he adds you to the supporters only um, so you'll have first dibs on the Bruzel Barrel Pick that should be coming here soon. Oh, yeah, Jack Daniels all day for sure. You got that cigar blend, but waited in line. They had one bottle and actually got, yeah, like nobody knows what it is. So like last time they had it, I went through the line, waited till everybody went through, went back. They still had three bottles of the cigar blend. So I was able, because you only get two bottles and they had, I forget, they had something I really wanted. And then I went back and got the cigar blend. So, because, but first of all, it's really expensive. Nobody's going to pay that for a bottle if they don't know what it is, if they're not like really into it. So appreciate it, Justin. Thank you. Yeah, I, it's going to be a couple of weeks before I'm live again. Maybe a few weeks before I'm live again, unfortunately. I've just got a work conference next week, and then the following week, I've got my whole leadership team in for the e-commerce agency, and we're trying to get better at what we do. Like We're trying to improve. we got some, some deficiencies I'm trying to make us better at. Yes, we're doing the barrel picks, Alexander. They are ready. They are. I've got a retailer. They're, they're in a warehouse. I've just got to get the website set up for you to be able to order them. And I'm, I'm like, that costs like 80 bucks a month for me to, cause I got to buy a whole new license to be able like, it's a whole thing, but I've got to get it set up, get a, 
design in there and I've got to tie it into his ship station and his payment provider and all that stuff so that I can actually sell them and be legal because uh, all like the go through the retailer. Um, I'm, that is my main mission in life tomorrow evening is to try to get all of that set up. And if I get it set up and ready to go, I, we might drop it Monday. I might just, I don't know. I'm going to be out Friday. I'm really going to be out to like, like, I'm not going to be here in the office if something goes wrong. So I don't know when I'll drop it. I might just get crazy and drop it Friday morning. Who knows if I got it done? Who knows? So just make sure you're in the group. Found a stag junior the other day, but wanted four. Yeah, I just, 450, no. No, 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 no. Everyone around here is taters and got the BT. Yeah, I understand. Take it easy, Douglas. Cheers, two tall ten. Oh, the Jack Daniels single barrel barrel picks are awesome, for sure. Like, I, what we got? Like, didn't we? Right there. Jack Daniels single barrel barrel picks. Just pick one of those up here in Vegas. They're like, I think they're like 69 bucks here in Vegas. Pretty good. Uh, Brandon, I'm in e-commerce. So we build websites that sell things. Uh, appreciate it, Steel Thumbs. Yeah, the Sinatra goes down easy. I like it. A little higher proof than Jack Daniels. A little oakier. Really good stuff. Uh, Wild Turkey 101 is good stuff, pizza. It's hot. It's cowboy. Yeah, it's it's got a lot of like intense, like oaky tobacco to me on the Garrison Brothers. Would you pay for a $10,000 for 50 year? Yeah, there, there's, there are a few people, um, son of, of Bree, that there's a few people that pay that, but not much. Like really, no nobody's paying that for it. Uh, favorite sub $100 bottle that I can find in Alabama. I mean, so let's take it outside of the whiskey drops, I assume. Like, take it out of the lottery stuff, like the super allocated stuff. What's the best bottle under $100 that I drink regularly? Kind of, I'm trying to mentally scan my bar back home right now to make sure I'm not missing something. But the Michter stuff, Woodford Double Oaks, I drink a lot of those. Um... Because honestly, there's not a ton of sub hundred dollar bottles that I just go back to over and over and over. And that's probably the ones Wild Turkey Rare Breed, Wild Turkey 101, Evan Williams Bottle and Bonds, um, Woodford Double Oaked, all of the Mictor stuff. The Mictor's Rock. The Mictor's Rock is hard to find in Alabama, but the Mictor's Bourbon, uh, probably those. And those are like well below a hundred dollars. First ever. Bottle kill, man. I hope hopefully you have a good morning. Later, Matthew. All right, I think we're going to call it as well. I appreciate. Um, I don't, Aaron. I'm still figuring out the price. MSRP is 110, but we're going through a retailer and he's got margins, and I honestly might have to charge just a little more than that, but it's not going to be much. Um, so it, you know, 110 is the MSRP. They want me to sell it for less than that. And honestly, I can't because I, I probably break even at best at that. So I might add a few dollars so I at least, you know, make a little bit for the effort and the time um, because, you know, the retailer and then like the retailer takes a cut and then we, you know, any break it, any, you know, bottles don't arrive, stuff like that, it's me, not him. So that eats into the margin a little bit. And, then, you know, there's just a lot of things there. So we're going to try to get shipping right. We obviously have to pay shipping on top of that. Um, we're going to try to charge actual shipping plus like the cost of a box and stuff to package it up. Um, but, you know, all of that stuff just kind of comes out of the margin. So we'll try to figure it out. Best Four Roses. Four Roses, uh, the limited edition stuff's fantastic, but also like Four Roses single barrel barrel strength's great. Uh, there's, I mean, JB, I, I like most of my bourbon hunting so far, the travel stuff has just been where I need to go for work. And then I just, you know, film it while I'm going. So I, I haven't really set plans. I want to maybe start doing some bigger videos to where we go to some distilleries and tell some stories and talk about the whiskey and just do more deep dive nerdy stuff on the long forms. I've just got to figure out the best way to, to make those videos work. Um, so I'll, I'll think about those. It's just going to take a little time for me. I got to have time back home to kind of marinate on those videos 
come up with a good idea and start filming those. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I do need to make some cash, Mike. That's exactly what it is. Make a few. I, I, we got a lot of ambitious things that take money, unfortunately. Um, all right. So I am, we're not doing a barrel pick of smoke wagon, but we might at some point, might at some point, who knows? All right, guys, I am going to call it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to call it an evening. Hit that like button if you haven't already. I appreciate everybody hanging out with us tonight. This was a fun impromptu stream that we had going on here. So I will catch up with all of y'all later and uh, see y'all next time.